Hello friends, I'm Neeshik and today in this video I'll teach you how to create a professional and beautiful e-commerce website and mobile app using WordPress for absolutely free. To create this online store, we'll be using only best and free resources. And for the design, features and functionalities of this website, I've taken inspiration from the top e-commerce websites in the world like Amazon, Walmart, Flipkart and AliExpress. This e-commerce website, although made using only free resources, has all the basic and essential features that a professional e-commerce website must have. In this website, you can create any kind of products, whether it be a simple product, sale product, variable or digital product, any kind of products. And a customer can come to your website, add to cart any product and when they do that, shipping cost and tax will automatically be calculated based on the shipping address and product's weight and dimension. And then they do the checkout and choose the payment gateway. Now the best thing over here is that you don't have to go to any third party website like PayPal or any other website. You can accept credit and debit card payments right on your website. Because we'll be securing our website with SSL certificate and I'll show you a live payment in this tutorial. And once the payment is done, the customer will get the order details that they can later use to track their order. And every time an order is placed on your website, you will be notified through email. This free e-commerce has many features that even premium themes and plugins don't offer, like the wishlist feature, order tracking feature, variation swatches, and obviously the clean and modern website design. Now once we completely create this website, I'll show you how we can convert this website into a mobile app and after that how we can give this app to your customers. Also this website is 100% mobile and tablet friendly and it is also optimized for best SEO settings so that you get better ranking on Google search results. And you don't need any technical or programming knowledge to create this website. It's all going to be simple drag and drop. In fact, you can just follow my step-by-step -step tutorial and by the end of the video, you'll have your own beautiful and professional e-commerce website. Now, before we proceed further, let me first show you a very quick demo of the website that we'll be creating in this video. And let me also show you what all features are available in this website so that you can make the decision right at the beginning of the video whether you want to watch the complete tutorial or not. So first of all, this is the website. If you see at top, we have our header. At the left hand side, I have my logo. Then at the right hand side, we have this option. We have the menu and we have some icons. Now this is a search icon. Once you click on this thing, you can search for any product. If you search for maybe a shirt, you can just search for shirt, you will get all the details. So this is the search option. And this is one of the most important options for an e-commerce website. Because obviously when somebody is coming to an e-commerce website, they are looking for a specific product. So they can search for that product and it will show them the result. Then we have the wishlist icon, whatever products you add in your wishlist, you can see that thing. We have the front end dashboard for the customer. So let me first show you this thing. If you click on this icon or user icon, if you click on dashboard, you can see this customer has this front end dashboard here. They can see what all orders they have placed in the past. I have not yet placed any order, so no orders placed. But if the customer has placed any order, they can see the order. They can download the invoice for that order. If they want to return the product, they can even request return for the order. They can also see their account details, wish list and so on. Let me again come back to the home page. Then finally, we have the cart icon. If you have added any product in the cart, you will see that thing. Right now, wish list and cart both are zero. We don't have any product under wish list and we have not added any product under our cart. So we'll see in this demo how that is done. Now, before that, you will see this is your first section, your banner section. And this is the design that I have created. The left hand side, you can see we have different Category. So if you're selling multiple types of products, like if you're selling fashion, lifestyle, electronics, home and garden related products, you can create different categories for that. Or if you're selling any specific uh, category, for example, if you're selling clothing, in clothing also you can have multiple categories like for men, for women, shirts, jackets, you know, all those things. So you can create these kind of categories. If somebody wants to see fashion related product, they can click on this link and you will or they will be redirected to that particular category. And we have added this very subtle, very simple animation. Once you hover over this thing, you know, you can see this very subtle animation over here. Then at the right hand side, you can see this is our main banner. I have given this title, subtitle and a call to action button that we are giving 30% discount. If somebody clicks on this, they can get that discount. Now, this is a banner that I've created myself. In fact, I, in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create this banner. Many times what happens is people learn how to create a website, 
but they don't know how to create a banner and without these banners your website will look very boring because as you can see these banners i'll show you how to create all these banners all these top banners if you don't know how to create these banners your website will look very boring so you must know how to do this thing and i'll show you how you can get these kind of professional images for free this is a free image that i got without any copyright issues or anything so i'll show you how you can get a free image like this how you can make it transparent then how you can import this image on this banner you can add all these elements and you can make your website more beautiful and more attractive then after that we have this info section fast and free shipping on all orders over 50 dollars next day delivery low price guarantee you can add all these options then another again we have few more banners over here okay if you want to uh, shop for any particular category you can go to that banner again once you hover over this thing you get a very simple animation over here then when you scroll down we have the featured products all the products that are featured now there could be multiple types of products simple variable external product affiliate product digital product i'll show you how to do all those things how to create a, all those kind of products now let me first show you a simple product so if you if you open this and if a product is sold out it will also tell you that this product is sold out for example if i open this one here as you can see it says out of stock i cannot add this or uh, i cannot add this product in my cart so this is an out of stock order so stock management and inventory management will also be uh, done in this video so i'll show you how automatic inventory management is done for example if you have 50 pieces of this particular t-shirt and you don't have to do manually once you add the quantity like i have 50 in my warehouse or in my inventory and once this product gets sold like 48 products is sold and you have only two uh, stock left then you will get an email notification that only two stock left please fulfill the order okay or please uh, fulfill the warehouse or the product okay now if i open this single product this is how it will look like you can see once you hover over this product it will zoom out uh, zoom in if you open, you know hover over this product image we have our title we have the price short description if you want to increase the quantity of the product that you want you can increase that and after that you can add this product in your cart if i click on add to cart you can see i'll get this slide from the right hand side and you can see this product is now added in my cart if i want to delete this product i can just click on this thing and this product is now deleted from my cart if i want to add this product in my wish list maybe i don't want to purchase this now but i want to add this in my wish list so you can see i can do it like this and later on in future i can always uh, see this thing you can see now under heart icon we have this one number which means that we have one product under wish list you can see this product we can now go ahead and click on add to cart and add this product in your cart then it will also display you your sku which is stock keeping unit i'll explain you what that is it will show the categories tags and we also have this badge guaranteed safe checkout because we are using ssl certificate and we are using you know reliable payment gateways so that there is no scam or anything so your customer gets this thing and they feel safe that your they are whatever payment they are making it is not a scam or anything then if you scroll down you'll get the long description or the main description of the product you can describe your product in detail you can add images videos anything you want under additional information it will display the weight dimension all the basic things and if there is product has any reviews it will also show that review over here or if you want to review this product you can obviously go ahead and do that now let me actually come back to the home page this was a simple product we also have variable product if i scroll down again we have these banners and all then we have this option we have multiple banner sections some i have created myself some i'll show you how you can use elements how we can use pre-made blogs and templates to create uh, different kind of banners and different kind of sections and pages now if i open this product you can also by the way add the product in the cart or add the product to your wish list by simply clicking on this you know heart icon or just clicking on this buy from amazon or add to cart button now if i open this product this is a variable product a variable product is simply a product which is available in different variations for example you can see this is a black t-shirt but this t-shirt is available in large and medium size and in multiple colors now the uh, uh, the best thing over here is that if i select large uh, t-shirt and maybe if i select red color you can see the image automatically changes and now it will display what or how the large uh, size red color t-shirt will look like it will also display the price you can have different price for different sizes and colors so large red t-shirt is 60 dollars if i select large green you can see 65 dollars and image again automatically changes if i select uh, 
medium green $47 if I select medium red so you can see this thing now once you place this order once this customer places the order for example let me add this product in the cart medium size red color so once this customer will place this order you will get all the details like what size and what color was uh, ordered okay you can see that thing now we can add the product in the cart and same thing okay now let me again come back to the home page and let's see if we have few more things if I scroll down, you see all these sections and all. And finally, we have our photo. I'll show you how you can create a photo. You can add your own copyright text. Whatever your company's name is, you can enter that name over here. We also have this newsletter section. If you want, you can start email marketing using this newsletter section. People can enter their email. They can subscribe to your newsletter. And you can send them updates whenever new, uh, whenever some discount is going on on your products. Or anything like that happens if you want to send them you know newsletters you can do it from here we also have few more pages if i click on this shop page you can see your shop page shop page is basically wherein all your product is displayed in one place okay now if somebody has a certain budget they can you know limit this thing for example if i want to filter product only under 90 dollars my product my budget is only 90 dollars i'll select this click on filter now it will display only those products which are under 90 dollars or maybe my budget is just like 40 dollars now if i click on filter you can see only those products which are under $40. If somebody wants to see only jackets or t-shirts, they can click on this thing. It will also display the top rated products with rating. You can see all three top rated, you know, five star rated products. You can see the product tags and so on. So this is going to be your shop page. Again, here also we have the option. If somebody has placed an order, they can go to the track order page. They can enter their order ID, which is the order number, and they can enter their billing email. These two things they will get whenever they place an order. I'll show you right now how to place an order, by the way. So once they have the order details, they can come to this page and they can track the order. Then we'll also see how to create blog post. We'll see how to create this blog page and how you can create different blog posts. And these blog posts will help you to generate organic traffic for your website and you will get better ranking in Google and Bing search results. Then after that, we also will see how to create the contact page. If somebody wants to contact you, you can give them their look. You can give them your location, your office location, your phone numbers and all. Or if you, if you want, you can remove this thing. You can just have this form. If somebody wants to be contacted, they can enter the form. They can click on this send button. You will get their details and you can contact them. Now, let me go to the cart page. View, view cart. You can just click on checkout and you will be redirected to the checkout page. But I want to go to the cart page. So this is the cart page. You can see what all products here. As you can see, medium size red color I have added in the cart. And shipping cost is automatically calculated. As you can see, because my location is in Maharashtra, which is a state in India. So based on this location, shipping cost $1 is selected. Okay, this is how it works. GST is also automatically calculated. Tax, VAT, whether it is VAT or GST, it is automatically calculated 12 percent or if it is five percent or ten percent whatever the tax rate is it will automatically be converted now if i change the state instead of maharashtra if i select some other state maybe i select uh, arun uh, andhra pradesh for example and click on update now you can enter you'll also have to enter the city and pin code so i don't know any pin code in andhra pradesh so i cannot do that but if you want or maybe let me see some city in andhra pradesh all right so i got this thing uh, amravati is the capital of andhra pradesh and this is the pin code so you let me try so i enter the city name now the pin code now if i click on update here as you can see now the shipping cost is two dollars instead of one dollar so the shipping cost will automatically change based on the location of the customer you can see the uh, this rate is for this shipping cost okay now, if I want, I can make payment through PayPal or if I want, I can click on proceed to checkout and I'll get even more payment options. Now, this is your final checkout page. Now, as you can see, I have made it clutter free. So your checkout page, when somebody comes to your checkout page, the menu, everything, header, footer, everything disappears because we don't want any distraction. We don't want the customer to go back to the home page or any other page. Obviously, they can go back to the home page by clicking on this logo. But we want them to focus totally on the checkout page and we want them to the, do the checkout. Now they can enter the details. They can enter the shipping address, billing address, or if they both are same, they can select that. They can make payment through credit debit card, through Indian payment gateway or whatever. If you're from India, I'll show you how you can integrate Indian payment gateways. If you're from some other country, Europe, USA or Africa, I'll show you how we can integrate your payment gateways and so on. 
If you want, you can also add some note on your order, like uh, uh, whatever note you want to give to the seller, you can add that note. And finally, after that, once you check everything sh shipping GST, and once you enter your card details, after that, you can click on place order and your order will be placed and you will get all the order details that which you can use uh, to track the order. All right, so this was a very short demo of the website that we'll be creating in this video. I hope you guys like the demo website. Now, if you like this demo website and if you want to create this website, make sure to watch the complete tutorial so that you can create your website. I'll show you a lot more things, uh, you know, just, not just websites. I'll, as I said earlier, I'll also show you how you can create banners. I'll tell you a lot about designing, how to use colors, contrast and all those things. So you will be learning a lot of things in this video. And again, I said no ads on this video and 100 percent free, free theme, free plugin, free page builder. Everything that we'll be using is absolutely free. Now, before you proceed further, make sure to also subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notifications. If you like this video, give a thumbs up to this video. Share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comments section below. And now let's start creating this website. Right now to create any kind of website, whether it's an e-commerce website, a simple blog or a business website, any kind of website, we need two basic things, a domain name and a hosting account. A domain name is simply the name or the URL of your website. For example, blogdude.com, youtube.com, google.com, amazon.com, all these things are different domain names. So we'll also have to register a domain name on the internet so that whenever someone wants to visit your website, they can simply type in this domain name in the browser URL bar and they can land on your website. Second and the most important thing is your website's hosting. Hosting is basically a server or a computer wherein your entire website is saved. So if you see this website from top to bottom, all the different pages, all the different images, products, database, this entire website is saved in a server and that server is running 24-7. So that whenever someone wants to visit your website from any particular country at any given time, they can always see your website live because your server is, because your server is always up and running. Now hosting is the most important thing about your website because everything related to your website is directly or indirectly dependent on your hosting. So your website speed, your website's performance, the user experience on your website, your website's security and even your website's ranking is totally dependent on your hosting. So if you've selected a good and reliable hosting, your website speed and performance will be amazing. User experience on your website will be very positive. Your website will have amazing you know, security for anybody to attack or hack your website. It will be almost impossible. And most importantly, you will get better ranking in Google, Bing and different search results. Now there are literally thousands of different hosting providers available in the market. But unfortunately, only handful of them is really good enough to consider. But you don't have to worry about that. You can simply do one thing, open a new tab and type in blogdude.com slash hostinger. In fact, you don't even have to type in this thing. This link is also given to you in the video description below. You can simply click on that link and you should now be redirected to this page. Now, first of all, you can see this is the hosting that we'll be using. And this is a WordPress hosting because we will be using WordPress to create our website. We are using managed WordPress hosting. We are not using the regular web hosting because that is very slow and not recommended for WordPress websites. We have different website, a specially crafted website for hosting, uh, for WordPress hosting. So this is the one that we'll be using. And with this, you get free domain name. So this is another great thing. And this is the only thing that you have to purchase. And you can see this is very inexpensive. This is the only thing that we need to purchase because we need some space, some hosting, some place to host our website. And this is also very exp uh, inexpensive to so don't worry about that thing. And this is the only thing that we need. Rest everything, theme, plugin, page builder, everything will be free. If you scroll down, first of all, you can see they have great rating, very positive rating and reviews on Trustpilot. Then if you scroll down, you can see we have three different plans, premium, business and cloud startup. Now you can choose any one of these plans and you can just proceed further. You can just click on this add to cart button for any one of these plans based on your budget. If you have a decent budget, you know, based on your budget, click on add to cart and proceed further. Now, before you do that, let me very quickly explain you some of the highlights, like what all things you get with any particular hosting. Now, this is the most popular plan business plan. And this is the one that I recommend. For example, if you select this plan, you just have to pay $3.70 $3 per month. And we also get two months free, two months of hosting, you get free. Now with this hosting, you can host up to hundred websites. 
So today you're creating this e-commerce website tomorrow. Maybe if you're going to create another e-commerce website or a blog or a business website for yourself, for your, some client or family member, you don't have to purchase a new hosting. You can host or you can create up to 100 websites in one single hosting plan. Now with this, you also get increased performance and that too up to five times the increased performance than compared, you know, comparing to premium plan. We get 200 GBs of NVMe storage. Now, how much storage do you actually need? If you see this website, this e-commerce website, I have like 30, 40 different products, images, pages, everything. Now the entire size of this website is hardly like 100 MBs, nothing more than that. So basically with one GB, you can create like 10 websites like this one. This is just 100 GB and here you're getting 200 GBs of NVMe storage. So you'll never be able to, you know, fill in this space. And most importantly, this is not your regular HDD or SSD hosting. This is NVMe storage. This is currently the fastest technology available. So if your website is hosted on NVMe server, your website will run really smooth, very fast. You also get daily backup. Your website will automatically be backed up every day. And if you do any changes on your website or if anything happens to your website, you always have your backup. You can restore your website. We get free email, very important, free business email for e-commerce websites. Now, most, uh, most of the times we just have a regular email like nayer at gmail.com. So instead of that, you, you, when you create a professional website, an e-commerce website, you must have a business email, which means that, for example, my website's name is blogdo.com. So I must have an email with my website name. So my email could be nayer at blogdo.com. So you can create unlimited free business emails with this. We also get unlimited free SSL certificate. SSL certificate is very important. In fact, compulsory for e-commerce website. It tells that this website is secure. You can see when I click on this thing here, it says connection is secure. Now you can accept online payments on your website. Without SSL, you cannot accept online payments. We get unlimited bandwidth. We get free domain name, free CDN. And because it is managed WordPress, we have so many different WordPress related features. Most importantly, we have WordPress acceleration, WordPress scanner, or malware scan. It will scan if there is any virus malware on your website and it will fix that thing. And most importantly, as I said, WordPress accelerator, this, uh, this hosting is using Lightspeed server to host your website and they are using server based caching to improve your, you know, performance of your website. And for security, you can see enhanced DDoS protection web application firewall malware scanner and so on so this is the plan that i recommend you can just uh, click on this thing add to cart button and you will now be redirected to your cart page in this page first of all you'll have to select for how long you want to purchase this hosting uh, the you know billing plan i would recommend you to go with the four years plan because this is uh, with the four years plan you get the most discount and you're also getting four years discount for example if you go with one year you're getting this hosting for $4.50 per month for one year. After one year, you'll have to pay $12 per month. But if you go with two years, you have this $4 and that too for two complete years. And even after two years, your hosting price, of, you know, your renewal price after two years will also be discounted at $10. If you go with four years, first of all, you're getting this hosting $3.70 per month for four years. So you're saving a lot of time. And even after four years, if you renew, you just have to pay $9 per month. So this is the plan that I recommend four years plan. And the subtotal is also very uh, less. You can see just $200 for four complete years of hosting. If you want, if you can, obviously you can go with one year or two years as well. Whatever plan you want, you can select this. And after that, scroll down. In the next option, you have to create your account with Hostinger. So you just need to enter your email address. Make sure it is correct. Make sure you have access to this email and make sure you don't have any spelling mistakes in this email address and also set a password for your Hostinger account. And remember this email and password because whenever you want to log into your Hostinger, you know, control panel or edge panel, you will have to enter this email and password. And finally, you will see the payment option. You can make payment through credit, debit card, PayPal, Google Pay. If you're watching this video from India, you have Paytm and Google Pay and net banking, many more options. So whatever payment option you want, you can select and you can fill in the payment details. You can also, if you want some additional discount, you can click on this thing, have a coupon code and enter this coupon, Nayar, N-A-Y-Y-A-R, click on apply. You will now get additional 10% discount. Here, as you can see, coupon applied now additional 10% discount. So whatever plan you want, if you want to go with four years plan, you will get discount and additional 10% discount if you use my coupon. 
once you fill in all these things once you fill, once you fill in the payment details and all and once you make the payment just click on the submit secure payment button to successfully make the payment right so once you click on that button you will see this page you will see the pop up and once your payment is successful you will see this notification your payment is successful and now you'll automatically be redirected to a new page now this is the page that you'll see this is your welcome page hello page once you create a new account with Hostinger, they welcome you. Uh, this is the welcome page. We don't have any options. We just have this button. Click on this button and a new process will start for you. They will ask you a few things. First of all, they will ask you who you're creating this website for, for yourself, for a client, for your company, for, for some company you work for, for somebody else. I'm selecting myself. Then they will ask you what kind of website you're creating, business, blog, portfolio, online store, or some other type of website. I'll select business over here. If you want, you can select online store or whatever option you want. Then similarly, they will ask you a few more things, one or two more things. Now, this is just a simple survey. If you want, you can fill in this survey. In fact, I would recommend you to fill in this survey because this helps the hosting of people to serve you better. But if you want, you can, you know, skip this survey as well. You will see the skip link at the bottom of the screen. Click on this link and this survey will be skipped. Then you have to select the platform, which platform you want to use, WordPress, WooCommerce, some other platform, or if you want, you can even migrate your website. Now this is for those people, if you already have a hosting account with some other hosting, maybe if you're not happy with the speed and performance or the support of the hosting, or maybe the hosting is very expensive. And if you want to migrate to Hostinger, you can select the first op a fourth option, migrate my website, enter your details and people at Hostinger will migrate your website for absolutely free. Now in this case, we want to select the first option WordPress. So click on this select button under WordPress. Then after that, you'll have to enter email and password. Now this is for your WordPress dashboard or WordPress control panel. Whenever you want to log into your WordPress account, whenever you want to log into the dashboard or backend of your website, this is the email and password that you'll have to enter. So make sure you remember this email and password as well. And after that, again, click on continue. Then in the next step, they will recommend you a few themes and templates. Uh, we don't need these themes and templates because we are going to create a different type of website, e-commerce website, and we want free themes. So again, I would recommend you to skip this option as well. Click on the skip link at the bottom. Finally, they will ask you uh, to select a domain name. There are three different options. Claim a free domain, buy a domain, use an existing domain. Now, obviously, because we are getting a free domain, we want to use a free domain. We don't want to spend some money on domain. So I would recommend you to select the first option claim a free domain click on the select button under claim a free domain and whatever domain name you want to register just type in that domain name for example if i want to register like nayashik.co.in so i'll type in nayashik over here at the left hand side and at the right hand side from this uh, from this drop down i can select any domain name extension .com .net .org .in .co.in whatever domain name extension you want you can select that i want .co.in so i'll select that and after that, uh, I'll click on search. Now this will search whether this domain name is available or not. If it is available, it will tell you that this domain is available. You can now click on continue and proceed further. Now we have one more option, use an existing domain. Now this is for those people who already have registered their domain names on some other website, maybe on GoDaddy, Namecheap, Namebright, wherever you have registered your domain name. Maybe if you want to use that domain name with Hostinger, you can select the third option, use an existing domain. So click on this select button under use an existing domain and now enter that domain. So I have this domain name blog dude, which I have registered on GoDaddy. So I'll type in this domain over here. Maybe this is the domain that I want to use with Hostinger. So I'll enter this domain over here and after that, I'll simply click on continue. Now in the next step, it will tell me where this domain name is hosted and what all are the current name servers. We don't have to do anything over here. So just click on continue and again, proceed further. Now in the next step, it will show you this uh, page. You can see what your current server location is. So because I'm from India, for me, Asia data center location is selected. If you're from some other place, some other data center location will be selected. If you want, you can change this thing. You can select some data center location in Europe, in USA, somewhere if you want. And after you select that thing, I would recommend you to keep it as it is, leave it as it is. After you do all these things, just click on this finish setup button. Once you click on this button, a new process will start for you. Basically what is happening right now is WordPress is getting installed on your domain name. And this is a very small process, hardly takes around two to three minutes. So let's wait. All right. So here, as you can see, the process is now 100% completed. And finally, you will see this page 
At the bottom, we have few options, but we don't want to use any one of these options. We just have to click on this Hostinger logo at top, this logo. Click on this logo and now you'll be redirected to your Edge panel. And this is your Edge panel. Okay, this is the page that you see. This is the place from where you will be controlling your hosting. And whenever you want to come to this page, you just need to type in this thing, edgepanel.hostinger.com. Okay. And after that, now click on websites. Here, as you can see, this is the website that I selected, BlockDude. Now, uh, we because we have selected or whatever website name you have entered, whether it was new domain name or existing domain, you will see this domain name. You need to click on this manage button now. And after that, you need to click on this WordPress overview. Once you click on that WordPress overview button, you will see this page and it will tell you here, as you can see, SSL certificate is installed on your website, force HTTPS is on. And after that, uh, you can also install Lightspeed plugin on your website to improve the performance of your website. It will also tell you what current WordPress version and PHP version you're using on your website. Now we don't need to do anything. You can also do staging and security things later on. Uh, for now, we just need to click on this admin panel. Okay, this button. Once you click on this button, you will you will be automatically redirected to your WordPress dashboard. In fact, you will automatically be logged into your WordPress dashboard as well. And you will see this page. I'll just click on dashboard for now, left hand side dashboard. Now this page, the dashboard page of your website, this is the most important page because uh, you will be controlling your entire website from this page. So whether you want to add a new product, manage products, manage payments, designing, whatever you want to do on your website, you will be doing it from here. And whenever you want to come to this page, just type in your domain name and after that put in forward slash WP hyphen admin. So if your domain name is google.com, type in google.com forward slash WP hyphen admin. They will ask you the email and password, enter that and you will be logged into your dashboard. If for some reason, if you forget your email and password, both email and password, you can always go to edge panel and just click on admin panel. You'll automatically be logged into your website. All right. Now, whenever we install WordPress on a new domain name, there are a few basic settings that we have to do and few basic things that we have to understand. First of all, let's do the basic settings. So on the WordPress dashboard page, you will see these widgets. These are not really useful. So we can do one thing. We can just uh, get rid of all these widgets. To do that, you can click on screen options at top and uh, you can just untick everything so that we have this nice and clean dashboard page. Now with the left hand side, we have few options. We have the post option. This is the first option. Under post option, you will see hello world blog post is already created for you. This is a dummy blog post. Later on in this video, we'll delete this blog post and we'll create our own custom blog post like we have done in this demo website. If you click on the blog page. Here, as you can see, we have created our own custom blog post. So later on, we'll see how to do that. Then we have the media option. Now, whatever media files, media uh, options you're using, images, you know, videos, whatever me media files or media options you're using, you will see those media files. So here you can manage them from here. Then we have the pages option, which obviously will be used to create different pages, your home page, contact page, shop page, those pages. Then we have the comments option. Whenever somebody leaves any comment under your product or your blog, you will see those comments over here. You can approve them, unapprove them, reply them. You can even delete those comments as well. Then another option is a very important option, appearance option. Under appearance, you will see few themes will be installed for you. And one of those themes will be activated. So in this case, 2024 theme is activated. We have 2023, 2022 theme as well. Now, if you open your website in a new tab, you will see this is how your website will look like. Now this design and appearance of your website is because of this theme, 2024 theme. If you go ahead and you know just activate some other theme, for example, let's activate this 2022 theme. Click on this activate button. If I again come back to this page and refresh it, you will see my website design is now completely changed. So this is basically what a theme does. Theme changes the style and appearance of your website. Okay. So we'll do one thing. We just need one theme installed and activated. So all these extra themes, we can just delete them. So click on that and click on this delete button. In fact, we don't even need this 2022, 3, 4 theme. We'll be using a different free theme later on in this video. But for now, let it be as it is. Then we have the plugins option. Under plugins also, you'll see few plugins will be automatically installed and activated for you. Now, what is a plugin? Plugin is kind of an add-on or a software that will add some extra features and functionalities to your WordPress website. For example, right now our website is just a simple blog. You can write some simple blog post on this website. You cannot do anything more than that. But we want to create an e-commerce website with all these amazing features, products feature, cart feature, pricing, 
you know, all these amazing features. So to add these features, we'll need different plugins and those plugins will add all the e-commerce related, you know, variation swatches related, payments related features on our website. So later on in the video, when we add plugins, you'll understand it even more better. Then you will see the settings option. Click on that. First, we need to do the basic setting. So under basic setting, you can give your website some title. So it could be under title. It could be your website's name, your company's name, your brand's name, something like that. So I'll just enter Flipkart maybe. Okay. With a C. Okay. Maybe this is my website's name under tagline. You can describe your website in few words like what kind of website it is and what you stand for and something like that. So you can describe your website in few words. Always make sure to tick mark. Anyone can register. Always make sure membership is tick mark so that people can come and they can create an account on your website. We want our customers to create an account on our website so that they can manage their orders. They can see what all orders they have placed in the past and so on. So make sure you tick mark. Anyone can register. Then under time zone based on your country, you can select the time zone. I'm selecting Kolkata time zone for India. And after that, simply click on save changes. Now under settings, click on permalinks and over here, select this permalink structure, post name permalink structure. This is the most SEO friendly permalink structure. Now under settings, click on reading, not reading, click on discussion and untick this thing. Comment author must have a previously approved comment. Remove that tick mark and click on save changes. Now again, come back to your dashboard. Now with this, we have completed all the basic and important settings of your WordPress website. Now, before you proceed further, let me again come back to the edge panel. I want to show you one more thing. Now, as I said you earlier that with this hosting plan, whatever hosting plan you have selected, you can create up to hundred websites. One thing. Another thing is that if you're using uh, an external domain name, there is one extra step that you have to do to connect that external domain name with your hosting account. So let me show you both the options, how we can do that. So for that, again, I'll come back to websites to add a new website. I have to click on this button, add website. Now what you want to use WordPress hostinger website builder, migrate your website. I want to use WordPress. Now again, they will ask you the same thing. What type of website you're creating and all now, because we have selected WordPress, you have to set email and password for your WordPress account. After that, click on continue. Then they will recommend you a few themes and plugins. We'll just skip all these things. No themes and plugins required. You can install these themes and plugins later on. Now it's time to get uh, the domain name. If you want, you can purchase a new domain name. If you want to claim a free domain, if you have not yet claimed the free domain. Now in this case, I want to show you how you can use the existing domain. So maybe I'll select this option, use an existing domain. Now there is this domain name nayashake.com. I have this domain name registered on GoDaddy. Maybe I want to use this domain with this account. So I'll select this domain, click on continue. In the next step, it will tell me where this domain name is hosted. It is hosted on GoDaddy. And these are my existing current name servers. I have to replace them with this required name servers. So let's do that. Let me go to GoDaddy. Obviously you'll go to some other website, wherever you have registered your domain name. Uh, my domain names are on GoDaddy. So I'm going to GoDaddy and over here I'll search for nayashik.com, which is over here. Now, besides every single option, you will see the DNS option. Click on DNS. DNS stands for domain name server. So we have to change the name servers of our domain. Here you can see the name servers option. Click on this and click on change. Now delete both these name servers, delete both the lines. Now come back to this page, copy your required name server. Number one, just copy this much, paste it under line one and also copy your required name server. Number two, paste it under line two and click on save. Now, once you click on save, it can take up to 24 to 48 hours to link your domain name with this hostinger account. So by that time you can click on continue and you can complete this process. Again, same thing. WordPress is getting installed on your new domain name. And again, you can see this process is also hundred percent completed. Now we can click on this hostinger logo at top. And now if you click on websites, you can see nayashik.com or whatever domain name you have added is now added. You can again click on manage and do the same things. Okay. Now come back to your dashboard. Now let's first install all the required themes and plugins. First of all, let me install the page builder. Page builder is something that will help you to build this website. This entire designing is done using this page builder. Okay. So this is one we have used a free, free page builder and we have designed this entire website, all the different pages using that page builder. And that is a free page builder. So you don't have to worry about that. Now to install that page builder, open a new tab and type in blogdude.com slash Elementor. Again, you don't even have to type in this thing. 
This link is also given to you in the video description below. So you can click on that link and you should now be redirected to this page. Okay. Now earlier they had the free version over here option available, but they have removed that free version available, but I'll show you. Don't worry. I'll show you how you can get this plugin for free. Okay. Now you can do one thing. You can click on login and sometimes they remove this option as well, but before, uh, let's, let's try now on this page, uh, click on this URL bar and do some changes in the URL. So after my.elementor.com type in this thing, welcome forward slash install. Okay. looks like they have removed this option from here, but don't worry. Uh, let's, uh, there is another way as well to download this Elementor for free. So we'll see that. So we can cut this thing now. Now again, come back to the dashboard. Now before that, let's, let's actually start with the theme. Let's first install the theme. So to install this theme, you have to again, click on uh, open a new tab and type in blogdude.com slash woostify. Okay. Again, this link is also given to you in the video description below. And this is the theme that we need. You can just click on get woostify free, enter the email to click on download, or you can just click on link. No, thanks. I just want to download the theme. Once you click on this thing, you will see the download page. Click on download now. And this theme has started downloading as you can see. Now let's first install this theme. And after that, I'll show you how we can install Elementor and other page options. Okay. Or other plugins. First to install this theme, we need to click on appearance, click on add new theme, upload theme, and just choose this file. Okay. Select this file over here. Click on install. Now, once this theme is installed, you need to click on this activate link and this theme will be activated for you. So let me just do that. Now, as you can see, it is activated. Now we can also delete the 2022 theme. So delete this theme from here. Now enable auto updates because, uh, uh this right now we are using the current version of 2.2.8 whenever 2.2.9 or any other option, the new version of this theme is available. It will automatically be updated. So make sure to enable auto updates. Now click on plugins at the left hand side, click on add new. And now it's time to install all the required plugins. So first of all, you can also search for Elementor from here if that thing does not work for you. So search for Elementor and you will get the Elementor page builder option. Here it is Elementor website builder. Install this option. Click on this install button. Don't activate it right now. We'll activate this uh, page builder later on. First install all the required plugins. So once you install Elementor and once it is successfully installed after that, Next, we have to search for variation swatches. Okay. So just search for variation. You will see variation swatches plugin. There are many plugins for this one, which I recommend and which I use is this one variation swatches for WooCommerce by Imran Ahmed. Install this one. Now with this plugin, what happens is what this plugin will do is if you see this thing, if you see the variable product, these swatches, variation swatches, these colors and buttons is because of this plugin. Okay. So make sure you install this plugin. Next, we need wishlist plugin. So search for wishlist. And again, for this also, there are multiple plugins. This is the one that I recommend. And this is the one that I use TI WooCommerce wishlist. This is by template invaders. Install this one. And again, obviously, you note this thing. What this will do is this will enable this add to wishlist option. You can pro add products in your wishlist. So install this thing again, we'll activate everything at the end. Next, we need a contact a form plugin. So just search for contact and install the first one contact form seven. This plugin will help you to create this contact form that we have created on the contact page, this form. All right. So you install this plugin as well. And once you do this thing after that, search for Woostify. Okay. Woostify is the name of the theme. You can search for that name over here and you can get this thing Woostify sites library. So with this, they have multiple websites, multiple pages, everything created, you know, ready-made pre-made templates. You can use this thing and you can download or you can use those demos or templates or sections on your website. And finally, we need the WooCommerce plugin. So search for WooCommerce. This is in fact, the most important plugin search for WooCommerce. You will get that WooCommerce option over here. This is the plugin that we need WooCommerce by automatic. This plugin is the most important plugin because it will add all the e-commerce related features on your website. Without this plugin, you cannot make your website an e-commerce website. So once you install all the plugins, first let uh, it get installed. Now it is installed. Once you install all these plugins, now click on plugins at the left hand side. 
Now we can activate all the plugins at once. So you can tick mark one by one or you can just do one thing. Uh, select this thing, it will tick mark everything. Under bulk action, select activate and click on apply. This will activate all the plugins that we have just installed. And here as you can see, everything is now successfully activated and also make sure to enable auto updates for every single plugin so that whenever a new version of any plugin is available, it is it will be automatically updated. Now, if you click on dashboard at the left hand side, again, it will give you some uh, widgets. You can remove them. Now, first thing that we need to do is we need to set up the wish list plugin. OK, you will see this option run this setup wizard. You can click on this thing. If you don't see this option, you'll, you can always click on TI wish list and you will get that option. But because we have this option, I'll click on this button, run this setup wizard. Now, don't have to do anything. Just click on let's go. Click on continue, just click on doing clicking, just you know, keep on clicking on this continue button. It will automatically do everything for you. Okay. All right. Once it is done, finally click on return to WordPress dashboard. Now, if you click on pages at the left hand side, earlier we had only one page, a privacy policy page. Now we have card page, checkout page, my account page, all these different pages, wish list page because of this wish list setup and all. So we have so many different pages because of the setup that we have just completed. Now let's see the WooCommerce settings. Okay, WooCommerce settings like what payment option you want to use, what currency you want to use and all those settings and taxation related, coupons related, all those settings. So for that, at the left hand side, hover over WooCommerce and click on settings. Now basic setting. First of all, under general, we have to do some basic setting. You have to enter your address. It can be your warehouse address, office address. Okay, so you can enter that address. I'll enter some address over here. All right, city name. Then after that, you have to select your state name and country name. So I'll search for Maharashtra, which is the state in India. And after that, your postal code or zip code, you can enter that. Selling location to all to which all countries you will be selling your products to. If you are planning to sell only in one country, which is the way forward, which you know, this is the option that you, you should be selecting if you're starting for the first time, just start with the first just for your country. And after that, you can expand. So if you want to sell to all countries, obviously you can leave it as it is. If you want to sell to specific countries, you can select sell to specific countries and you can select those countries. So I'm selecting India. Maybe if you want to use one more country. So maybe I also want to sell in United States. So I'll select this thing. Maybe I'm selecting, I'm selling in these two countries. Okay. Now enable taxes and calculations. If you want to enable taxes, just tick mark this thing. Now what currency you want to use US dollar, or if you want to use Indian rupee, you can search for Indian rupee or Bangladeshi rupee or whatever thing you want. You can search for that currency and you can select that currency. And after that, click on save changes. Next option is your products option. Click on that. And over here, make sure under shop page, shop is selected. Okay. Then after that, uh, we have, uh, okay, under weight unit, normally we should be using grams or if you're from USA, you use pounds and all those different, you know, weight and dimension units. So you can select that in India, uh, we use grams, grams. I'm selecting instead of kilograms because most of the products that are sold online are you know very lightweight for example mobile phones t-shirts those are like few grams like 100 grams 500 grams something like that or 200 grams not in kilograms so that is the reason why i'm selecting grams dimension unit is centimeters inches or some other unit you want you can select that click on save changes then we have the tax option click on that now you have to select this option additional tax classes click on this Press enter, you will go to ne next line and you can enter your tax name. If it is called VAT in your country, you can type in VAT and whatever percentage. For example, VAT is 5%, you can type in VAT 5% like this. Okay. Or if it is called GST in your country, you can type in, this is just the name that we are giving. So I'll type in GST 5%. Maybe if you're selling multiple types of products and multiple GST rates, different GST rates are applied on different uh, products. And if you want to create multiple GST rates, you can do that. So again, press enter and GST 12%. So I'm select, selling some products on which GST is 5% and on some product it is 12%. So I've created two rates. Now, once you type in these two things, after that, click on save changes. Now you'll see these two new options added at top GST 12 rate, GST 5 rates. So first I'll click on GST 12% rate, click on insert row. 
and enter your country code. For India, it is I N. For uh, if you just type in A. For USA, it is US. I guess. Okay, as you can see, once you type in US, you will get this thing. For Pakistan, it is PK. Okay. Uh, and for some other country, for Philippines, wh whatever country code you have, you can just type in. For India, it is I N. So I'll type in I N. Now leave the state, postal code, city, everything. Just come to rate. Because we are doing settings related to 12%, under rate, I'll type in 12. Under tax name, I'll type in GST, 12% or again, I'm saying VAT 12% depending. Now, by default, shipping is tick mark, which means that whatever the shipping rate will be, 12% will also be applied on the shipping. For example, if the shipping rate is $1, then 12%, which is 12 cents, will also be applied on shipping. So if you want, you can have this or if you want, you can disable this thing. Now click on save changes. Now similarly click on GST 5% rate, insert row under country code, enter your country code and under rate type in 5, under tax name type in GST 5 percentage and you can tick mark or untick shipping. Now with this we have created two different shipping or uh, two different uh, GST rates or tax rates. Now click on shipping. Now we have to do the shipping uh, rates. Now shipping cost will be different for different countries. For example, if you're selling in USA and also in India, because I'm from India, for me selling products in India is much cheaper. I can sell products uh, anywhere in India and the shipping cost will be very low. And I'm from India, if I wanna sell, if some customer has ordered some product from USA, for example, if I wanna you know, ship this product to the customer in USA, it will be more expensive. So you have to set up those rates over here. In fact, even in India, you can have different rates for different uh, zones of a different states. So I'm from Maharashtra state. If somebody is purchasing product, if the customer is also from Maharashtra, the shipping cost will be lower. If somebody, some customer is purchasing product from Jammu and Kashmir, for example, which is very far away, thousands of kilometers away, then that shipping ra rate will be different. Okay, so if you want, you can have a one shipping rate for entire India, or if you have, if you want, you can have different shipping rates for different states. Okay, let's see how that is done. So first I'll click on add shipping zone and under zone name, I'll type in Maharashtra, which is my home state. So whoever is purchasing from home state, shipping cost will be uh, less. Now under zone region, you have to search for Maharashtra. You will get your zone. Just tick mark that thing. Okay. And make sure Maharashtra is selected over here, whatever option you have selected. Now click on save changes. Now click on add shipping method and select flat rate. Or if you want, you can give free shipping to Maharashtra. And Okay, and after that for other states, you can charge some money. So let me actually do that. I'll just, or maybe let, let me just select flat rate, click on continue. Now under flat rate, you have to select the cost. For example, if you want to set cost of $1, you can set $1 and click on create. Now whoever is purchasing product from Maharashtra, they will be charged $1 for shipping uh, option. Okay, now click on edit. But with this $1, there is one problem. If a person, for example, if you're selling t-shirts, if a person is purchasing one t-shirt, they will be charged $1. If the same person is purchasing like 100, 100 t-shirts, they still will be charged $1. So to fix this thing, we have to do one thing. After $1, after 1.00, give a space and type in asterisk space. In square brackets, type in QTY. You can also click on this uh, question mark icon and you can see the uh, formula over here. 10 into QTY. Okay, so $1 into a quantity QTY. So if a person is now purchasing three t-shirts, it will be one into three, which is $3 for the shipping cost. Okay, you can fix this thing. Now click on save. Now we still have one problem. And that is if you're selling multiple types of products, if you're selling maybe t-shirts, and maybe if you with that, you're also selling like refrigerators. Now, obviously, you no know, shipping a t-shirt is very easy, very inexpensive. But if you, want, if you want to deliver, or if you want to ship a refrigerator or television, shipping cost will obviously very high. So, or maybe a different uh, for sure. So for different products, you can have different shipping rates. And to do that, you can click on classes. Okay, you can click on this classes option and click on add shipping class. Now maybe for t-shirt, I'll create a new shipping class t-shirt. And uh, under slug also, you can type in the same thing. Now click on create or description also, same thing, click on create. This is uh, your shipping class. Now I'll click on add shipping class. Now this will be refrigerator. Okay, same thing, type in under slug and description. Similarly, if you're typing, if you're creating some other, uh, if you're selling some other types of products as well, you can type in those classes. Now, if you again come back to shipping zones and if you edit Maharashtra, 
let's click on edit and now if you edit flat rate click on edit now as you can see we have few more options what now you have to do is earlier we had added this formula under cost now cut this thing from cost and paste it under no shipping class okay when no shipping class is selected like if i have not selected whether it's a t-shirt or a refrigerator then this is the default shipping rate one dollar oh, okay now if it is a refrigerator maybe i want to charge like ten dollars so 10 into quantity so 10 and this formula simple formula and if it is the t-shirt maybe i just want to charge like 50 cents okay so this is going to be the formula 50 cents into quantity not this bracket we have to use regular square brackets okay like this again if you don't if you get confused you can always click on or hover over this question mark you can see the formula now whenever somebody is purchasing t-shirt they will be charged 50 cents if they purchase a refrigerator 10 dollars per quantity now click on save now this was for maharashtra you can again come back to shipping zones for different states you can have a different zones so a different rate so i'll click on zone now this time i'll type in rest of india so rest of india i want different rate okay now under zone region i'll first search for india now under india i'll select every other state except for maharashtra okay i'll select all the other states except for maharashtra okay here it is maharashtra i'll skip this thing rest everything i'll tick mark all right all the union territories as well all right now you can see 31 plus uh, states and union territories are selected now click on save changes again click on add shipping method flat rate continue again under cost let it be zero now go to no shipping cost now uh, if somebody is purchasing from outside maharashtra and i have not selected if i have not selected any shipping class then i want the default rate to be two dollars and for refrigerator person if somebody is purchasing outside maharashtra some from some other country uh, from some other state i want to charge them twenty dollars per quantity instead of 10 for maharashtra for the home state it was 10 outside maharashtra for other states it is 20 for t-shirt for maharashtra it was 50 cents but here i want one dollar or maybe two dollars or just one dollar per quantity for t-shirt outside maharashtra okay now click on create so this is how you can have different rates for different zones again click come back to zones now you can create click on add zone you can select united states and you can set some other rate for that as well for example let me do that click on add zone i'll name it usa and zone region i'll search for united states okay i'll select this click on save changes first if somebody is purchasing from usa maybe whatever amount you want to charge for refrigerator you know like maybe 100 bucks or 300 dollars for refrigerator for t-shirt maybe we'll select 10 dollars okay now click on create so i'm just giving you a simple example you can set different zones and different rates for different zones for different types of products different classes and you can do all these things now let's see the payment option payment setup click on payments and what all payment options you want to give by default we have only check payment cash on delivery direct bank transfer if you want to give cash on delivery option you can tick mark cash on delivery click on save changes now obviously uh, in modern days we want them to have you know options of online payment for accepting payments through credit card debit card net banking all those things so for that we'll have to also paypal if you want to enable paypal if you want to accept payments through paypal you can also enable those payment gateways now for that we need different plugins so you can do one thing you can open this plugins tab in a new tab okay plugins option in a new tab click on add new plugin now if you want to accept payments through paypal you can search for paypal plugin search for paypal and uh, there are multiple plugins for that this is the one that i use payment plugins for paypal woocommerce install this one this is by payment plugins okay you can also install WooCommerce payment, uh, PayPal payment. This is the one that I use because you can also see the rating. This has more positive ratings. So with this, uh, if you use this payment plugin, if you use this PayPal plugin, you can now accept payments through PayPal. Now, if you want to accept payment through credit debit card right on your website, like I've showed uh, on the demo website, then you have to search for this 
payment gateway stripe and uh, you need to install this one woocommerce stripe payment gateway this is by woocommerce so install this plugin and with this plugin you can accept online payments right on your website you can accept credit debit card payments now the thing is stripe is not accepted in many countries for example stripe is not accepted in you know african countries and most of the countries stripe is mostly used or mostly accepted in you know U usa european countries and some middle east countries but not not in all the countries so this might not be useful for some people so if you if you if you are also amongst those where in stripe if if you're from some country where in stripe is not accepted you can just go to google and search uh, what payment gateway is available in your country you know select that payment gateway create an account on that payment gateway and you can search a plugin for that for example for india we have many payment gateways we have pay you money we have cc avenue we have razor pay many payment gateways are available so if i search for that for example if i search for razor pay over here I'll get this option, Razor Pay option. Here's you can see Razor Pay for WooCommerce. I can install this plugin. Now with this plugin, I can accept payments uh, from Indian cards, Indian net banking, UPI, all those kind of payments. Now I can accept for my products because of this plugin, Razor Pay plugin or Razor Pay payment gateway. So again, I'm saying for Pakistan, for Bangladesh, for Africa, if you're from some African country, you can search for that payment gateway. And once you get this thing, download a plugin for that and once you do this thing again come back to plugins and tick mark these three razor pay payment woocommerce and activate them click on apply okay wait make sure you activate all three all right let's again see whether all three payment gateways were activated successfully yes now if i again come back to this payment option and refresh it you will see a lot more new options will be added First of all, let's let's set up PayPal uh, option. So I'll select PayPal Gateway by Payment Plugins. Enable this thing. Okay, click on Save Changes. Now I need to click on PayPal Gateway or click on Manage. Now to accept payments through PayPal, you need to click on API Settings. Now before that, obviously, first, if you don't already have an account on PayPal, go to PayPal.com, create a new account, and after that, you can accept payment through PayPal. Now under API Settings, make sure Production is selected. Now you just need to click on this button, click to connect. A new pop-up will show up for you. And in this, just fill in your PayPal details, fill in your PayPal email address. Next step, enter your password, click on login. Once you log in, your account, your website will automatically be linked with PayPal. Click on agree and continue. And after that, you can accept payment through PayPal. You will see once it is completed, you, everything, this client ID, client secret, everything will be auto-filled as you can see. Everything auto-filled, now click on save changes and now we can accept payments. Again, come back to payments. Now let's set up Stripe. Here it is, Stripe credit card. Okay, click on this Stripe credit card. Uh, first, uh, click on, uh, first we need to enable it. So click on payments first. Make sure to enable this thing first. Once you enable it, you will see this pop up again. Click on create or connect an account. So again, if you don't already have an account with Stripe, go to stripe.com, create an account on Stripe. And after that, you can do the setup. I already have an account, so I'll just enter the Stripe email account. Click on continue. Enter the password. Again, click on login. Now you need to select your account and click on connect. And just like PayPal, now Stripe will be automatically connected with your WordPress website, with the website that you're creating and you can accept online credit debit card payments on your website. Again, you will be automatically redirected back to your website. Now let's uh, select uh, Razor Pay. Okay, so I'll click on Razor Pay. And for Razor Pay or for uh, most of the plugins or most of the payment gateways, you have to get the key ID and key secret and you have to enter this and you can accept payment through that. So here's you can see debit card, UPI, net banking, all these payment gateways for India. So to get this thing, you have to go to Razorpay account or Razorpay website, uh, which is dashboard.razorpay.com. Now log into your dashboard. Once you log in, you will see at the left hand side accounts and settings. Click on that. Now click on API keys. And here you will get the live API key. Copy this. Paste it under key ID. Now copy the live secret key. Paste it under key secret and click on save changes. 
and now you can accept payment also from indian customers because you have integrated indian payment gateway similarly for other countries if you want you can go to that country again i'm saying search for that plugin create an account on that plugins uh, on that payment gateways website and after that you will get client id and secret just paste in those code and this will work for you now click on accounts and privacy and over here tick mark this thing allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout allow customers to create an account during checkout allow customers to create an account on the my account page and remove these two tick marks okay basically what happens is a new username and password is automatically generated for your customers we don't want that we want our customers to set their own username and password. Whatever username and password they want, they can set that. So that is the reason why we remove these two tick marks. Okay, make sure first four tick marked, bottom two unticked. Click on save changes. Then after that, click on advanced. And over here, just make sure under cart page, cart is selected under checkout page, checkout. And under my account page, my account is selected. And after that, click on save changes again. And with this, we have successfully completed our WooCommerce settings. Now let's start creating different types of products and start with the basic simple product. Now to create a new product at the left hand side, you will click on products or under products. You can also click on add new. I'll click on products at the left hand side. And here you will get this option, create your first product. So you can click on create product. Now let me do one thing. Let me actually go back to this page. And let me just open a simple uh, uh, product from here so that I can just copy paste the details. In fact, let me open this one. Okay, so I'll open this product. The name is black jacket, black fashion jacket, also, although this is not a jacket, but I'll just copy the title. So this is where the title will come, product name or product title will come. Then after that, if you see, this is the product long description. So if you see over here, this is what the long description is. Now, first of all, I'll just copy simple text, paste in over here. Now, if you want to do some changes in this text, for example, if you want to change the color of any word or any sentence, you can select that much. And after that, you can click on this toggle toolbar. Okay. And after that, you'll get few more options. Maybe I want to change this color to orange. Now, as you can see, it is orange. If you want to make anything bolder, I'll select this much. I'll select bold. You can do all those things. If you want to add image in this, you can do that thing as well. For example, if I click on add media and if I upload some images, in fact, before I do this thing, let me tell you one thing. There is a link given to you in the video description below. If you click on that link, you will be redirected to my website. Now, whenever I create a video tutorial, I also create a blog post like this whenever you click on that link which is given in the video description you will be redirected to a similar blog post and here you will see uh, this page and at the bottom you will see download free images you need to click on this blue download button after that you will download a zip file and once you unzip that file once you uh, you know extract that file you will get this media folder and inside this media folder you will have all these images and product images and few more things so let's upload any one of these images from here. So I'll select this file and come over here, media. Let me maybe just upload this simple image. I'll select this, click on open, click on insert in product. And this is how it will look like. If you want, if you want, you can click on this image and you can make this thing align left so that it will align left and it will also display this text with it. So this is the description. You can also add some YouTube link and it will automatically be converted into a video. So you can do all those things. You can add text, media files in this description. Then if you scroll down, you will see the main option, the main product data option. First of all, you will have to give some price. So by default, you can see $52. So what I recommend is I always recommend to give it some higher price, like uh, maybe the pro product price is $199, but you're selling it for maybe $59. Okay. So regular price, uh, sorry, uh, regular price price will be 199 at top and sale price could be 59. Okay. So the regular price is 199. And if you're, and if you're, you're selling this thing for just $59, whether this product is taxable or not. So I would say this product is taxable and what tax class is uh, there. So I'll select GST 5% is applied on this product. Now under inventory, you have to type in the SKU. SKU stands for stock keeping unit. 
basically if you're doing warehousing if you if you have your product stored somewhere in your inventory in your warehouse you have different codes for different racks on and on, on those racks you have different products so you create a code for that so that you know where this exact product is in your warehouse so for example this is a t-shirt so i can create a sku of t double zero one okay something like this now if you want to manage stock you can do that thing as well you can take mark this thing now suppose if i have 50 quantity of this product okay this exact product i have 50 of these products now i'll just enter the quantity 50 over here and whenever somebody purchase for example i have uh, one customer comes they purchase one product now automatically in the back end this will become 49 and you can also set a low stock threshold so maybe if i type in 5 over here now whenever there is only five of these t-shirts left i'll get a notification i'll get an email that this product is low in stock you should fulfill this stock so this is how it works then after that we have shipping what is the weight of the product okay dimension length width height you can type in the uh, dimension and shipping class what shipping class should be applied so i'll select t-shirt shipping class which was 50 cents for maharashtra and one dollars for outside maharashtra if you remember so these are the three basic things under product data that you have to do rest everything just leave it as it is under simple data simple product data these are the only three things that we have to do then if you scroll down you have product short description short description is this thing that you see over here besides this product image so i'll simply type in this short description now if you go at top at the right hand side we have product image product gallery all these things so first of all under product image i'll upload this product image from here so under the media folder you will see this products uh, folder open this and here you'll get many more images so i'll open this image from here click on set product image and after that product gallery under gallery you can upload other images of the exact same product for example this is the same image of this t-shirt and this is the back side of the t-shirt so this could be your product gallery image then after that product category so because this is the t-shirt i'll do one thing i'll click on add new uh, category and type in t-shirt category now whenever in future i create a new product which is a t-shirt i'll just tick mark this t-shirt category under tag you can type in some tags like fashion could be a tag it is a white t-shirt so white could be a tag something like this once you do this thing after that you can simply go ahead and publish it and just like that you have created your first product if you open this link in a new tab you can see this is how it will look like it has already started to look very much similar to this one uh, we have to do some basic changes later on in the video but for now you can see add to wish list add to cart and this uh, stock thing everything is working over here if you hover over this image if you scroll down you can see your product long description additional information so this is how you create your first product now let's create a variable product this was a simple product now if i click on all products now just to save some time i'll duplicate this product so i'll right click uh, i'll hover over this and you'll get this duplicate option so i'll click on this duplicate option this will save me some time and maybe i'll come back let me see a variable product so this is a variable product i'll open this one short sleeve t-shirt i'll change the title of this thing okay whenever you uh, you know duplicate a product I'll always remember to change the permalink as well okay make sure you add your title over here new title and it will change the permalink similarly you can change the product description and all now for variable product first we have to do one thing we have to change the product data and we have to change this type to variable product okay now as you can see some changes have been made so product data we have to uh, select variable product now before we do anything else for now just publish this product before we do the variable product before we create the variable product first we have to create the variations or first we have to create different attributes okay and after that we'll create variations from those attributes so under products you will see attributes option open this attributes link in a new tab now we want this product in different sizes and colors so i'll create two attributes one of size and one of color so under attributes i'll come i'll name first thing size I'll enable archives type will be button and add attribute then another attribute is color so under name I'll type in color enable archives and type will be color okay now click on add attribute 
Now we have to add all the colors and sizes in this. So under size, click on configure terms, click on this link, configure terms. Now what all sizes you want? So I'll type in small, just type this thing, click on add new size, medium, large, or you can type in XXL, XL, M, L, you know, those kind of things. Then we'll again come back to attributes and now we'll select color. So under color, click on configure terms. And over here you can add all the different colors. So first let's add black. Now, once you give it a name of black, you should also change the color. So here we have the color from here, select the black color. Okay. So that it will display the actual color over here like this. Then after that, uh, another color that I want to display is red. Okay. And after that, I'll uh, select the red color. Okay. You can also change the exact color if you want. I'll select this red color. Similarly, if you want green color, you'll type in green. Select the green option. Okay. So I'll select this white and what all colors you want. You can just keep on just selecting that color from here. I'll select the white color, click on add new color. And similarly, you can add even more options over here. Then after that, uh, once you do this thing again, come back to this variable product and refresh this page first. All right. So we have added the title description is done. We have changed the product data type to variable product. Now again, you have to select taxable or not inventory. You have to select, uh, this will be SKU 002 because SKU unit should be unique for each product. Okay. Now for this, I don't want uh, quantity or oh, no stock management. I don't want this thing shipping also same thing. Now we have to come to attributes and under attributes, we have to select size and color. So you'll select, uh, you'll see this drop down from this drop down, select size and also select color. Okay. Now under size, maybe this product is available in medium and large sizes. So I'll select these two size under color. I'll select, maybe it is available in black, uh, green, and also maybe in red. So I'll select these three colors. And after that, I'll click on save attributes. So basically this product is available in two sizes and three colors. Now, once you create the attributes, after that, you have to click on variations. And before that, make sure these two things are tick marked visible on product page and used for variation. These both, both these things should be tick marked. Now click on variations and over here, you have to click on this option, generate variations. Click on OK. Now from here, you have to do one thing. You have to select large black. And first of all, let's upload the black color image. So I'll first upload uh, these images from here, scroll down. Let's see these. Okay. Here it is a red color. I'll upload all the images at once just to save some time. So red, black, then green. Okay. I'll upload all these images, click on open. So first we are creating the black color image. So I'll select the black image, click on set variation image so that whenever somebody selects uh, the red color or black color, the product color will also change. If I select black color, product color, all of the product changes. Now the price for this. So maybe for this, it is uh, $49 for black, large, then uh, uh, large green. I'll select the green image. First of all, maybe this is uh, uh, $59 or $55. Maybe then we have large red. I'll select the red image. Maybe this is 59. Then medium black. So first we'll select the black image and maybe this is 39. Medium green, green image. This is maybe uh, 42. And finally we have a uh, medium red. I'll set the price of $45. And after that click on save changes. Similarly under short description, you can type in your short description. Now at the right hand side, uh, remove these product images and now you can add your own product image. So I'll select this image as my product image, main product image and these as my gallery product images. Okay. Once you do this thing, it is also t-shirt. So category is t-shirt, which is fine. And here under product tag, I'll remove the white. Maybe it is available in red and green. So I'll add these two and click on update. And just like this, you have created your variable product as well. Now, if you open this product in a new tab, let's see how it looks. As you can see, this is how it looks like. If I select large green, 
Color will change to green. Price is $55. If I select large red, color changes to red. Price changes to $59. So this is how it works. So this is your variable product. All right. Let's again come back. Okay, guys. So with this, all the basic things are now done. We have seen all the WooCommerce setup. We have seen the payment integration. We have seen how to create different types of products. Now it's time to design this website. Now the designing part is left. Our website looks uh, blank. If I go to the home page, this is how your home page looks like. So it, it is a blank page. We have not designed the shop page and other pages. So now it's time to start designing this website and we'll start with the home page. Okay. This page, this is our home page. We'll start with this page. So to design this page, we'll first have to create this page. All right. So to create this page, we'll select this option pages option at the left hand side. Click on add new page to add a new page, obviously. Now under title, first remove this thing under title. I'll give it a title of home because this is going to be our home page. And after that, at the right hand side, you will see this template option. Instead of default template, select Elementor full width. Okay. Elementor full width. And after that, just publish this page. Now, once you publish this page, you have created a new page. You have named it home. But just by naming it home, it does not become your home page. You have to set this page as your home page. For example, this is the card page, but this is set as the card page. And that is the reason why besides this, you see the card page checkout page because these pages are set. But besides home page, nothing is written, which means this is just a regular page. This is not set as your home page. So let's set this thing as our official home page. So to do this thing, you will hover over settings and click on reading. Now select this option, your home page displays, select the second option, a static page and under home page, select home. Now click on save changes. Now, if again, uh, if you go back to the pages and now if you see besides home page, now it says front page, which means that this is now your official home page. If you edit this page, now you will see this Elementor page builder, edit with Elementor. Click on this option, edit with Elementor page builder. Now, once you click on that option, you should see some options like this. You can just click on continue. First of all, make sure you see container option over here at the right hand side, at the left hand side under label, under layout, you should see container option. You should see also one more option, grid option. If you don't see that option, for example, in this case, I cannot see that thing. So you can go back to your dashboard and you have to do one simple setting. You have to click on Ele uh, Elementor or hover over Elementor and click on settings. Now go to features and you have to select this grid container and activate this thing. Okay. Set grid container active. And after that, uh, click on save changes. Once you do this thing, if you again come back to this page and refresh it, now you'll see grid besides container option. Now you can see we have container, we have the grid option. Okay. Now, before we start designing this page, let me first explain you what this element of page builder is and how it works. So a page builder, as the name suggests, is something that will help you to design or to build these pages. Now, at the left hand side, we have different elements. We use these elements to create the website. That is the reason why it is called Elementor. So we have different elements at the left hand side. We'll be using these elements to create or design our website. At the right hand side, we have the canvas. Now, whenever we create any page, we create it section by section. So this section, as you can see, this is your first section. Then this is your banner section. Then third section is your featured product section and so on. So we create it section by section. Now to create a new section, you click on this plus button, you select flex box and you select how many columns you want in this section. So maybe if you want three columns, you select this option three, or maybe this is two columns. So I'm selecting two columns. Maybe I just want two columns in my first section. Like we have over here, we have one small column at the left, one big column at the right. So maybe this is how you will do it now. Whenever you add any section, you will see at the left hand side settings are now changed. We cannot see the elements. Now we see this container edit container setting. If you again want to go back to elements, you need to click on this nine dots icon, click on this nine dots icon. And now you'll see this thing. Okay. This is how it will look like. Now, suppose if I want to add, a, uh, let's say I, if I want to add button in the left hand side column, so I can simply drag and drop the button over here. And you can see this is how your button will look like. Now, whenever you use any element, you always get three settings. If you see at the left hand side for this button here, it says edit button and we have three options, content, style and advanced under content. Obviously you'll change the basic content, like instead of 
or click here you can type in read more okay you can change the link and all those things now the style you can change the styling like you can change the typography font family you can change the text color so if you want to change the text color for example to red you can do that thing you can change the background color so let's say we want to change the background color to some other color okay whatever color you want you can set that color from here so this is the styling thing similarly border radius we'll see all these things border radius padding box shadow and so on then at, under advanced you can change the margin padding z index alignment positioning all these advanced things so whatever element you use you will always see these three things again let's go back to elements so we'll click on the nine dots icon maybe for the second column if you want to use maybe uh, let's say an icon you can drag and drop the icon over here this is how it will look like again for this option also we have content style and advanced under content you can change this icon you can replace it maybe with a taxi icon then we can go to style you can change the color okay whatever color you want you can change that color fine and after that uh, under advanced also you have the same settings so this is how it works now what i'll do is i'll right click and delete this thing and now let's start designing this page so for that what we'll do is we'll first click on this plus button flex box and we'll select two columns you can select any one of these two columns now left hand side column if you see it is very small or very uh, you know the width of this left column is less and the width of the right column is more so what we'll do is we'll select this left column we'll click on edit container for the left column and instead of 33 or 50 whatever option you have selected we'll type in 23 so left will be 23 now for the right hand side click on this edit container for the right column and make it 77 all right so a total will be 100 now what we'll do is we'll do one thing we'll click on the uh, edit section option but i cannot see that option if you add another section or another container below this thing for example let me add this thing now on top of every single container you get these three option add container edit container or delete container but i am not getting this edit or these options because it is hidden if you see at top it is hidden so what i'll do is i'll select this option at the bottom left corner navigator icon click on navigator and now you'll see the top con container click on that top container the default width is 1140 i'll make it 1200 instead of 1140 i'll make it 1200 and i'll click on update for now the reason i did this thing is because if you see all these sections they start from here okay uh, but the top section is a little bit wider we have some extra space at left and also at right so that is the reason why i increase the width of the top sex, uh, section or the top container now what we'll do is we'll select this option this is uh, this design we want image and at the right hand side we want this text so for this i'll select image box okay search for image box element this is the one drag and drop it over here First of all, upload the image that you want. So we'll upload the image under me in the media library. You will get these images. All right. Click on open. Let me first select maybe this image and title. Maybe let's add fashion under title and we don't want description. So I'll remove the description. Now let's go to style. Uh, I want image position left. Okay. Vertical align will be middle, which means everything is in middle image and or text in the middle if you select top this is how it will look like we want middle then after that alignment also you can select left now select the image spacing is 15 which is good between image and text spacing is 15 but image is very big we want to make it smaller so width also should be 15 percentage and this is how it will look like then after that go to content and let's also decrease the size of this thing okay so under content we will change the typography okay we'll make it outfit or poppins both are good i'm selecting outfit for this so search for this outfit font family size will be 15 okay not 115 just 15 and after that we want to make it 500 width okay we want to decrease this option from here so this is how it will look like then after that we what we'll do is we'll select this option uh, we'll go to advanced option and we'll search for border okay because if you see at the bottom we have this border okay so we want to add this border now select border type solid border width first uh, dealing this thing okay click on this link together click on d-link 
Now at bottom we want one pixels border and this is very dark. You can see black type of color. We want to make it lighter. So if you want to make the border color lighter, click on this border color and just bring it over here. This bottom one, bring it over here. It will make it transparent. And uh, let's try a few more. Let's see a little bit more. All right, this should look good. And this is how it is looking. All right. Then after that, once you have done this thing, you, you can see we have we are displaying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight categories over here. So you can simply right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate eight times. Okay, until you have eight categories, you can just do it like this. So four, one more. All right. Now this is how it will look like. So first of all, for the second option, you can click on the second option. Second, maybe is electronics and you can change the image. Okay. Change the title to electronics. Now, as you can see by duplicating, we have saved a lot of time. We don't have to now do this styling. We don't have to go to this thing, change the alignment and all these things. So when you duplicate this thing, you save a lot of time. Similarly for the third one, uh, let's select uh, maybe a home and garden. So I'll change the title to home and garden change this image to some other image. All right. Now we have a lot of space between each of these options. So to fix this thing, click on this edit container for the left column and remove the gaps. You can see gaps of uh, 20 column and 20 row, just make it zero. And this is how it will look like. Okay. This is looking much better. Then after that, go to advanced. Okay. For the same thing and make margin zero. Okay. Margin should be zero. Now it's time for padding. If you see, we have some spacing at left and right, also at top and bottom. Okay. So this image is not starting from here, from extreme left. We have some spacing at left and right. So to do that thing, we need padding. So select padding again, first delink it. Now, once you delink it, then for the top and bottom, we want 10 pixels and for left and right, we want 30. So top 10, right top bottom uh, 10 and left right 30. This is how it should look like. All right. Then after that, we want to set, we want to go to style and we want to set the background color. The background color of this section is white. It is already white, but it is, I'll still change the background color to white. And after that, finally, I want this shadow. You can see we have this shadow uh, from all sides. And also we have uh, the corners rounded just a little bit. Once I add this shadow, you can see that thing. So first to add shadow under style, we'll click on border. Now we'll click on box shadow. Now you can select how, where this will look like, like as you can see, you can change the horizontal and vertical position of this shadow. You can make it less blur, more blur. You can increase the spread, decrease the spread. You can, you can do all these things. Now I want horizontal zero, vertical also should be zero. All right, so I'll type in zero. Blur a little bit. So I'll just select five pixels blur over here and spread will also be zero. All right. Now, if you see, this is how it will look like. Now, again, as I was saying, you can see the corners are you know, sharp. I want these corners to be rounded just a little bit. So under border radius, I'll type in maybe five pixels, just a little bit uh, radius. Okay. Now, if I scroll again, you can see this is how it looks like. If you want, you can even decrease this thing. Maybe instead of five, just three. Okay. So this is how it should look like. Now I want to do one more thing. Uh, you can similarly now go ahead and change all the other options. Now we, we need to link this thing. When somebody clicks on this thing, for example, when somebody clicks on fashion category, maybe this is not fashion category. This is t-shirt category because we have created the t-shirt category. So when somebody clicks on the t-shirt category, let me also change the image. We want them to be redirected to the category page wherein they can see all the t-shirts. So to do this thing, you first have to go to your dashboard and at the left hand side under products, click on categories. Now select the t-shirt. Here it is t-shirt category. Once you hover over that, you will see the view link, right click on view and click on copy link address. I think you'll get that thing over here as well under link. If you search for t-shirt. I think you should get category option or oh, we don't get that thing, but don't worry. So you can just paste in the link that you have copied from your t-shirt category link. You can paste it. Now, whenever somebody clicks on this t-shirt category, they will be redirected to that category page. I want one more thing. When I hover over this thing, as you can see, we see a very little bit 
of animation. So if you want this thing, you can go to advanced and after that you can select uh, uh, this transform, select hover and what transform you want. So maybe I'll just select uh, uh, offset. Now by default, if you add some number over here, as you can see, this is how it looks like. I want a little bit, maybe just five offset. Okay, now as you can see, so this is how it will look like. Click on update. Now what I want to do is for say for we have to do the same thing for all the other option, but that will take a lot of time. So to fix that thing to save some time, you can right click over here, click on copy, then right click for the second option. Now don't uh, select paste, select paste style. So it will uh, paste all the styling, which also includes this hover animation and all those things. So again, paste style, right click, paste style. Similarly, for all the other options, you can go ahead and add the link for those categories. All right. Now this is how it will look like. So with this, we have completed the left column. Now it's time to create the right column. So first click on update. Now before you create the right column, in the right column, we just have to add the text and this button. But most importantly, we have this banner. And as I said to you in the introduction, I'll show you in this video how to create these kind of banners. So first of all, in this banner, you'll see we need an image like this. So first we need to get an image uh, like this. So you, there are many different websites wherein you can get free copyright free images uh, or for your website or for your e-commerce website or for blog, whatever purpose you want it for. So for this, you have to go to that website, unsplash.com. Here you can get all these images for free. There are a few more websites. If you go to pexels.com, here also you can get these images. Now this exact image that I've used over here, I got it from Freepik. So if you enter Freepik, free and P, uh, P I K pick. Okay. Not P I C P I K pick. So if you go to free pick and if you search for this exact thing of uh, maybe man with a camera, something like this, if you search for this thing, you will get these kind of images as you can see. Now, whatever image you want, you can use that. Let's see if I can find the exact same image. There are so many images you can use any one of these, but let's see if I can find the exact image that I've used in my demo website. Yeah, here it is. This is the image as you can see. I think this is the one. Okay, similar, not the exact image, the same guy with the camera, but a little bit different. So once you open this thing, you will see that under, okay, no worries. We can still use this image. So if you want to use this image, you can go ahead, click on download, click on free download, and this image will be downloaded for you. As you can see, getting downloaded. Now this image has this white color background, this shadow and all. I don't want this thing. We want a transparent image so that we can place this image on our banner. So to make this image transparent or to remove the background, you can go to this website, remove.bg. Go to this website and you can upload this image over here. Now once you upload the image, it will remove the background for you automatically and it will give you this transparent image after that. Because this is a larger file, it is uh, taking some time. This is 12 MB. Okay, now it is done. As you can see, we have a transparent image. Okay, and it will also show you the before and after what they have done for you. Now, once it is completed, you can go ahead and simply download this image. So let it complete first. Okay, so once it is completed, you can now simply click on this download button. And now this transparent image will be downloaded for you. If I open this thing, this is how it will look like. Now we can use this image on our banner, but before that we have to create a banner. So to create a new banner, you have to go to this website, canva.com. And here you can create these kind of banners. In fact, if you see, this is the banner that I've created over here, multiple banners for different types of websites. Now, uh, what I want to do is this is the banner that I've created. So if you want to create a banner, first of all, you have to select the size, what size you want for this banner. So to create a new banner, select the size, click on create design. I'll select custom size and under width, I'll type in 1960. All right. And under height, you can select whatever height you want. So in this case, I want to select 900. Okay. So 1960 by 900, click on create new design. Now, first of all, let's go change the background color for this banner. Here you can see this is the background color, green type of background color that I've used. Now, if you want, if you go to any website and if you want to get the exact color of anything like image or text or anything, you can download this uh, Colorzilla Google Chrome extension. Okay, if I click on this thing, as you can see, now wherever I place my cursor, it will give me the exact color code. Okay, 
Now I want this color code for this background. So you, I'll just simply select this thing and now click on click. Just, just click on this thing and it will give me this color code F4, FF1, something like that. So it will automatically copy it for me. If I paste it, you can see this color code. So I'll come over here. I'll click on this banner. I'll click on the background first. Once you click on this background, you'll get the background color option. Click on this. Now click on add new color and paste in the color, which is F4, F, F, F1. You get this color. If you want, you can use obviously some other color as well. Now I want to upload that image that I've just used. So I'll upload this image over here, drag and drop. You'll get this image. So if you want to use this image or this image, whatever image you want, you can simply drag and drop the image. Okay. Increase or decrease the size. Let's see this much. Maybe I'll bring it over here like this. Okay. So we have the image, we have the banner. Then after that, we have all these options. Like he, we have the shape, we have all these lines, dots, all these things. So first let's get the shape to get the shape. You go to elements and go to uh, shapes. In fact, you, you can search for gradient shape or gradient block. Okay. I'll select gradient shape under graphics, open under graphics. And whatever shape you want, you can select that. So let me search for that. Some are free, some are paid. Or uh, maybe I'll select this shape, select it, increase the size like this, bring it over here. Okay. Maybe increase a little bit more. All right. Maybe this much. First, I want to change the color to this uh, again, brown color. Or if you want some other color, you can change that thing. I'll use the same thing. Colorzilla. Okay. Copy the color code. Come over here. Select the blue color instead of this blue color. I want this brown color. So I'll paste in the color code. Same thing instead of this color, I'll replace the color. Now we want to bring this image at top. So I'll select this image, right click and under layer will select bring forward. Okay. Now we have this image. Then after that, what we want, we want these lines, dots and all those things. So I'll search for lines under gradients. And you'll get these kind of lines, whatever line you want, you can use that. There are many different options given. This is the one I think I'm using. Let's see. This is the one that I've used. So I'll bring it over here, change the color to this color. So I'll bring it over here, change this color to maybe this color. Okay. Or if you want to do some changes in this, you can make it even more lighter like this one, increase or decrease this size or like this, All right? Fine. Then after that, we have these dots. You don't have to follow the exact same option. Like you don't have to create the exact same banner. I'm just showing you how it is done. Once you know this thing, you can uh, do some other changes. So you can create a different type of banner and all. I'm um, right now. I'm just showing you how it is done. Okay. Now, whatever dot you want, for example, if you want these dots, you can use them, place them wherever you want. Maybe let's place it over here. Change the color a little bit. Okay. Instead of this color, let's change maybe white color or gray type of color like this, right? So whatever color you want, maybe let's just select this color. You can use them similarly again. Let's come back to this thing. Let me again search for lines or maybe dots, not lines. Let's see some more dots. Uh, let's search for that. Always make sure to search under graphics, not under images or anything else. And this is also an use something that you can use. Okay. I'm just showing you whatever option you want. You can use them. Again, you can change this color to some color like this. Okay. So whatever options you want, you can use them on this website. And after that, you, you can have uh, an option like this. These are, as you can see, uh, this is also I've used. So let me search for that. If you search for cloud, you will get these kind of options or think cloud. If you search for that, you can get that thinking cloud. Let me search for that. Okay. Something like this. Let's use this simple one. Okay. Decrease the size, bring it over here, change the color to this color and copy paste it multiple times, place it at different places. Okay. Maybe one over here. So this is how you can create your banners. You can again change the size of this image. Once you're done with this, you can simply click on share, click on download. 
and select again click on this download button and your banner will be downloaded once it is downloaded i'll show you let it download first here as you can see downloaded if i open this thing this is your new banner now you can use this banner on your website just like i've used over here so this is how you create different types of banners these are all the text that we have to use uh, that we have to enter using elementor but the banner is now created so we'll again come back over here and to place this banner we'll click on this right column edit container go to style classic and uh, under background image here you see background image you can simply upload this banner image that you have just created so i'll select this image click on open once you have this image first let it upload so once you have this image you can simply click on select it will display like this we want to change the display size to cover and position center center or if you want you can change the positioning as well now this is touching the left hand side option but i want some space in between so what i'll do is i'll go to advanced and at the left hand side of this banner which is over here i need some margin so i'll dealing the margin first and at margin left maybe i'll type in 20 pixels now as you can see we have this space in between click on update so this is your banner option then after that what i'll do is will in fact will we can now just start creating we can now start adding these text okay so these are all simple again go back to elements now let's start with the heading or uh, drag and drop the heading first one says men fashion so i'll simply type in this thing go to advanced or go to this thing and you can change the color and all so for this color again i can use this option i can and see this is the color code ff7f84 okay you can get the color code now size of this thing you if you want you can decrease the size i'll make it 18 pixels and make it lighter 400 i also want to increase letter spacing which means i want to add spacing between each letter so letter spacing of one okay letter spacing one and uh, rest everything is fine once you do this thing uh, you can see the fashion yeah everything is looking good then after that at the bottom i need some space so I'll go to advanced and under margin bottom, I'll add maybe 10 pixels, not 210, just 10 pixels at the margin bottom. Then after that, we have this text. So let me copy this thing, come over here, again heading, drag and drop it, paste in the text. Now go to style and change the text color. What we have, we have this green color. So let's see the color code. Okay, paste in the color code over here and after that uh, let's do one thing let's increase the size 56 make it bolder 700 bold all right and we'll also add some line height between each line i want uh, some line height i'll i'll select em for line height and i'll type in 1.2 okay this is the line height that i want now what you can do here is first of all uh, we, uh, this is in one line so to fix that thing uh, first let me fix this thing click on edit container also this is there is no spacing and all so first let's fix that thing click on edit container now let's go to advanced let's add some padding so for top i'll add like 80 pixels okay so that we have some space from top and from left i'll add 40 pixels and from right also you can add uh, from right like 80 or 100 pixel whatever you want or maybe 200 pixels so that you get this thing in two lines i'll add maybe 250 pixels all right this is how it will look like and uh, right column also you can remove this gap so you can type in zero so that the gaps are removed this is how it will look like okay i think we did not make it bolder let's see Let's make it even more bold, 800 or maybe even 900. Okay, let's change the font family first. Uh, change the font family to Poppins. Now it will become bolder. Okay, same thing for the title as well. Uh, for the top title, make sure to change the font family to Poppins. All right, and this is how it will look like. Now click on update. And after that, uh, let's see. Then we can simply do one thing, right click on this thing, click on copy, then right click paste because we have we have the same setting over here. I'll just change the text, discount 30% off this week and I'll add some spacing because you know we need some space. So I'll go to advanced, 
and now instead of bottom uh, bottom 10 is fine but top also i'll add like 30 pixels or 20 pixels at top then finally we have our button i'll drag and drop the button element at the bottom right the button says shop now let's type shop now and uh, let's see how it looks and then we have the same color so i'll copy the color code we have the color code already copied so i'll come over here under color paste in the color code okay i'll have to do it again okay this is the color code paste it again then after that uh, border radius because it is circular if you want to make it square type border radius zero okay or square or rectangular basically if you want pointed corners make border radius zero then padding you can change the padding so for this button i want padding of 15 from top and bottom and 30 from left and right okay 15 top and bottom 30 left and right then after that uh, let's see what we can do we can actually select this text and also make bottom also 20 pixels this is how it will look like okay now let's come over here first click on update and finally click on edit column edit container and let's add this shadow okay this little bit of shadow so to add this shadow you go to advanced in fact you go to style and select border add border shadow and this is how it is looking i want to do a little bit changes over here so i'll select this thing now instead of this option i want to bring it down and uh, a little bit to the vertical size let's see all right so this is what i want for now i don't want this much blur all right and also color i want light color spread also i want to decrease a little bit okay so this is how it will look like click on update and with this we have successfully completed our first section this was a little bit um technical or uh, we had a lot of things going on over here rest all these sections are very very easy just simple sections in fact this section that you see this is just a layout i'll show you how we can use layout right now i'm showing you how we can create a website using you know only elements basically creating website from scratch then after that i'll show you how you can use the different blogs and layouts to create a website we'll see everything so for now we have completed our first section rest all these sections are very easy now to create our next section we'll again click on this plus button and now this time we'll select grid because we want four columns like this so i'll select grid and from here we'll select uh, four if you don't see four columns no worries you can select two or three columns and after that as soon as you select grid at the left hand side you see columns and rows we can increase the number of columns instead of three we can make it four or instead of two you can increase this thing to four columns also one more thing i just noticed that we need some extra space over here at top so what i'll do is i'll select the first option first container okay from the navigator and add 20 pixels margin at top 20 or 30 pixels whatever you like i think this is looking good so 20 pixels margin at top now we can start with this option now in this grid we want to add this option okay we want our a logo at the left hand side then we want this title and everything at the right hand side now for this you can use both icon box or image box if you use icon box let me show you both you can drag and drop the icon you can search for the truck icon okay and then you can follow whatever i'm going to do next but i don't like these regular icons that we get over here okay so i i, I won't be using these regular icons so i want to use some other icons so for this instead of icon box i'll use image box okay so if you search for image box you will see this thing drag and drop it over here now first of all we need to create these icons but we don't have to create it we just have to download it so to download this thing you can go to this website icon8.com and you can search for that icon so first we need this truck icon so you can search for truck or you can search for delivery truck you will get this icon in fact you will get hundreds of different icons now here as you can see colorful regular dotted all kind of icons you get over here whatever whichever icon you like you can select that thing i think we have used this one maybe so whatever icon or whichever icon you like you can select this thing we also want to change the color of the icon if you see properly it is not black or uh, it is gray type of color 
which is I think this color but let's see let's use this color picker and this is the color code 7C818V so if you want to change the color of this icon first of all select the icon and then after that click on edit color and uh, you can add or paste in whatever color you want you can click on uh, done and after that you can click on download and download the icon uh, select the uh, let's see okay so the free one is 100 by 100 so I'll select this thing and I'll click on download and after that you will get this icon here as you can see you can now download this icon now there is one more website from where you can download these icons you can go to flaticon.com and here also you can search for that same thing truck and here as you can see again hundreds of different icons are available whichever icon again you like you can just click on this and after that if you want to change the color you can click on edit icon and make sure you log in or register this is all free but you just need to log in so once you log in after that you can edit the icon so first once you log in it will refresh now you can click on edit icon and now here from here click on choose a new color and paste in the color code and here you have it now you can click on download png but here with the free version you can download big icons like the size of the icon can be big as, as big as 512 pixels click on free download so both the websites are, are very good for downloading these kind of icons or logos kind of thing if you want you can use icons 8 or flat icon and after that once you have this icon you can drag and drop it over here so i'll upload these icons i've already given you these so i'll just upload it from here select this click on open now first one we need the truck icon okay let's if you get any error like this anytime you can always do one thing click on update just refresh this page and after that try it again and you won't get any errors now all right now let's try it again click on this thing now let's upload these icons again right now click on open now here as you can see everything is getting uploaded so if you get any error just refresh the page and try again first we want this truck icon so i'll select this click on select then after that we want our title to be fast and free shipping and our subtitle to be on orders over 100 or 50 dollars whatever you want now this is how it is looking we want to change the layout and all so we will go to style we want image position left and vertically vertical alignment we want in center everything should be in center and this alignment should be center the basic alignment now first let's see the image uh, i need to change the size decrease the size of this image so i'll make the width 20 percent okay this will decrease the size of the image then we'll go to content and change the size of the content as well first of all i'll select this option or uh, spacing i don't want any spacing we have a lot of space between the heading and description so spacing i'll make it zero it will decrease uh, decrease the space between the heading and the description now in the typography i'll change this size to 14 pixels and make it to 500 okay like this if you want you can change the font family as well i don't want to do this for description I'll change this size to 14 again, but this will be 400. All right. This is how it will look like. Now, once you have one thing, you can simply right click, copy, then right click, paste, right click, paste, and right click, paste. So this will save you a lot of time. Okay. So now for the second option, you just need to change the icon and change the heading or whatever you have. All right. So let's change the heading and description as well so designing part will save you a lot of time now more similarly for the third and fourth one as well you can do it finally do one thing click on this edit section edit container okay six dots icon and after that we can increase or decrease the width width is fine or uh, 1140 but if you want you can decrease this thing to 1100 like this okay and after that we can go to advanced and let's add some spacing at top and bottom so padding i'll add padding top and bottom 30 pixels so this will add this space at top and bottom like this then after that click on update and with this we have completed this section as well so as i said you earlier all the other sections are very easy now for the third section first of all for this section you need to create these kind of banners so again go to canva and i've already shown you how you can create these kind of sim and this is a very simple banner we just have the image 
and we have removed the background using remove BG and we have just added the color in the background. So just like this, you can create these kind of banners. Now, let me just tell you the size of this banner. So the size of this banner is, uh, let's see, 728 by 360. Try to keep all the sizes consistent so that it looks good on your website. So size is 728 uh, by 360. Once you have created your banner on Canva, after that you can use this on your website and you can add all this content. So for this again, I'll come back over here and again we'll use grid because we have three columns and all three equal columns. So I'll click on this plus button again, select grid and this time we'll select three columns. Now in this column, first of all, let's uh, add these content and after that we can add the banner. So this is the first title. I'll do one thing, drag and drop the heading, paste in the title, new arrival or whatever title you want. Now what I've done is I've selected a darker version or a darker shade of this color. Now there is a website, maketintsandshades.com. Uh, if you go to this website, if you enter any color code, so using this color picker, let me see the color code for this green. If you enter this color code over here, click on make tints and shades. Okay, let's actually select a little bit darker color. Or if you just select a green color code, if you go to Google and search green color code, you will get this code. Paste in the code over here. Click on make tints and shades. Now, when you use this thing, it will give you some darker shades and some lighter shades as well. So this background color is using this most lightest shade okay you can see this thing this background color and after that for all the text color you can use this darker shade like these colors for this one okay there are more websites where wherein you can use these kind of uh, uh, things you can have different tints and shades different uh, shadings of the same color so you can use this kind of website for doing this thing now i'll see the color code for this for the text Alright, so this is 20894D. Okay, so I'll paste in the color code over here. In fact, I'll save the color code so that next time we don't have to copy paste this thing. So I'll save this thing as dark green. If you want, if you want to use this color multiple times, then you can do this thing. Okay, so we have the color. Now I'll change this thing, change the sizing and all because this is very big. So for this one, I'll change the sizing to 12 uh, pixels. And let's make it lighter, 500, all right, or maybe 600. And after that, uh, you can also add some line height. So if I uh, if I just select this text, you can see the blue section at top and bottom, that is the line height. So for this, I will select uh, line height. Line height should always be in EM instead of PX, that is much better. So line height, I'll select 1.8. Then after that, for the second text, again, I'll copy the text. In fact, I'll just duplicate this text if you want. Or maybe let's let's copy this text. Drag and drop this text. Okay. Now you can see when you try to add another text below this thing, you cannot do it. So we actually have to do one thing. Uh, inside each of these uh, grids, you have to add a container. So first, I'll cut this thing. I'll copy it and then delete it. Okay. I have copied it so that I can just paste it. Now you can inside of each container, inside of each of this grid, you have to insert a container. And then in the container, you have to select the direction of uh, vertical. So that each of, for example, first, first heading will be at top, then down, then down, then down. So this is the direction, down direction, vertical direction we want to select. Now right click paste. So we don't have to do it again. Now you can do one thing, same thing. Uh, drag and drop the heading at bottom okay this time it says work and play okay paste in this thing same color code so you can do one thing get the color code again all right come over here paste in the color then after that for this this one is a little bit bigger so i'll select 18 pixels okay and line height will be 2 em like this then after that, we have simple text. I'll copy the text, come over here and we'll use text editor. Okay. Now again, you can see we have a lot of space between each. So to fix this thing, you can click on this thing, edit container. Okay. This one left on edit container and remove the gap, make gap zero so that extra space is removed. Now copy the text, go to this option, paste in the text. Then again, go to style and uh, let's do one thing. 
let me again see the color code for that come over here paste in the color go to typography and we have to decrease the size in fact size is i think good we can make it 13 and line height we can change this thing to 1.2 right so this is how it will look like then below this thing we have some space if you see below the text we have decent amount of space so what i'll do is i'll go to advanced and I'll add padding bottom or margin bottom of 20 pixels. All right. Then after that, finally, we have uh, uh, this thing we have. This is also heading. So instead of doing this thing, I'll do one thing. I'll copy the first text. Right click paste. Now change this thing to shop now. Color and all, all is present. I just want to increase the size of this one to 14 and line height. Maybe 1.3 is good. And finally, I want this thing to be link. When somebody clicks on this thing, they should be redirected to the shop page or whatever page you want. So if they want them to be redirected to shop page, you can select link option. You can search for shop. You will get the shop page link. Just select that. Now, whenever somebody clicks on this thing, they will be uh, redirected to that page. Then after that, we also want uh, this underline for this. So we will go to style and we'll select decoration underline. Now we have this thing. In fact, we can also make it a little bit bolder, maybe 600. All right, this is how it will look like. Then finally, we have some padding from all sides. As you can see, this is the content at the left, top, bottom. We have some space. So that is the padding. So again, we'll click on container, select this edit container, go to advanced and add padding of 30 pixels from all sides. Okay. Now under container only, we want to add the background. Okay. This banner as a background. So we'll go to style background and upload this banner. So let me just select this banner, click on open, click on select size, display size should be cover position. You can select center center and this is how it will look like. Once you have this thing, you can now right click on the container, click on copy, then right click second option paste, right click paste. Now this will save you a lot of time. Similarly for the Second and third option, you can do do the same thing. Now, one more thing, when you hover over this thing, you have you see this very subtle animation. So I, what I'll do is I'll select the container. First one, edit container, go to advanced. I've al already shown you how to do this thing. Select transform, hover and select scale just a little bit. Okay, not 0 0.1, 1.1, let's see. Or maybe 1.03. Okay, now as you can see, this is looking better. All right, so this is on. Or maybe 1.05 if you want, you can set that thing. After that, click on update and we have created this section as well. Then after that, we have our next section, which is this featured product section. So for this, we'll click on this plus button, flex box. This time we need a single column. Okay, directional column. Select the first option, directional column. First, we need this title and subtitle. So I'll copy the title. Come over here, use the heading element for this. Paste in the title and after that, let's do the styling. So color is fine. Now size for this one, I want this to be 28 pixels and uh, we'll make it 500. This is looking very bold. So 500 is good. Then after that, uh, let's see. Then we have our next text. Now for this also, I'll use the same thing heading. Drag and drop the heading at the bottom. Okay. And we'll decrease the size of this thing. Maybe instead of this, for this, let's use text editor. Okay. Simple text editor. And you can change the color if you want. Make it a little bit darker. All right. This is how it will look like. And after that, we need some space below. So again, we'll go to advanced margin or uh, padding. You can add 20 pixels bottom. You can, it could be margin or it could be padding. Then after that, click on update. Now, because the title says featured products, we need to display featured products over here. Now we have created two products. If I go to all products, you can see we have created these products. Now, if you want to set any product as your featured product, you just need to click on this star icon. Now for the, for this, for example, for this white t-shirt, if I just click on this star icon, this will be set as my featured product. Now, if I want to display my featured products over here, first of all, I'll have to search for shortcode element drag and drop this element at the bottom 
now inside this shortcode element i need to replace i need to you know enter my shortcode for feature products so you'll get this thing if you go to google and if you search for this thing woocommerce shortcodes you will see the first link open the first link shortcodes included with woocommerce scroll down and you will see different scenarios as you can see if you want to uh, display random sale items if you want to display feature products this is the shortcode copy this shortcode come over here paste in under the shortcode now limit will be 8 because we want to display 8 products and we want to display 4 columns so columns will be 4 okay this is how it will look like still it looks a little bit different the image size uh, looks boxier squarer and we have this uh, this uh, wish list icon or the heart icon over here we have to do some changes but we'll do that thing final customization at the end of the video for now as you can see this is how it is looking with this short code you can display your featured products you can see it is not displaying the first product because we have not set that product as a featured product so this is how it works then after that what we want to do is we want some spacing at top and also at bottom so for this again we'll select the main section edit container click on edit container and for top and bottom padding we'll add 80 pixels like this all right the rest everything is looking good i guess so we'll uh, leave it as, as it is then after that if you want to create another banner section you can do that thing first of all what i'll do is i'll add another flex box and we'll copy paste this thing okay title and subtitle because this is very similar so i'll copy paste the title and subtitle just change this thing instead of featured products and now it says what's new and instead of this whatever it says now below this thing if you want to display these kind of banners now this is till now what we have uh, whatever we have uh, seen that is from scratch using elements now this is just a simple banner that is created by the theme developer you can use these kind of banners on your website so if you want to use this thing you can click on this icon uh this last icon okay this uh, rocket icon click on this and here go to blocks now under blocks you will see first of all i don't want premium one of i want free one or if you want banner or what you can select this thing i want banner so i'll search for banner or maybe i'll go to all and search for this for example as you can see this is also another banner these are all banners if you want to use this banner for example click on this thing and click on import banner this thing will be imported for you or whatever banner if you want to use or import this banner just click on this thing if you like this thing click on import template it will be imported for you uh, i'll just use the same banner just for demo purposes because i've used that banner in the demo website so i want to create the same banner and if you want to create for example use this banner you can use this one as well let me actually search for that banner very quickly okay so here as you can see banner version 13 this is the one if i click on this thing this is how it looks like i can now click on import template and this entire banner will be or this entire template will be imported for me so if you want you can use these kind of templates or these kind of blocks now once you import it you have to do some changes for, for example i don't want this thing title subtitle i'll remove this thing in fact i'll remove this entire section now below this thing instead of this image in the background if you want to change this thing you can click on this image instead of this thing if you want to use this thing you can replace it with some other image similarly instead of this text you can just type in some other text we have already seen how to change text and all these options okay so that will save you some time but this will give you some uh, options which you can use you just need to replace your content okay instead of these dummy contents you can replace it with your own content then after that click on update whenever you do any changes on your website always make sure to click on update finally last section we have our recent product section so for this what i'll do is i'll just copy the, this entire container right click copy right click paste now instead of featured products i'll just type in recent products now and instead of this shortcode i'll delete this shortcode go back to that woocommerce shortcode page scroll down and we'll search for this option newest products copy this and paste it over here now it will display your latest products as you can see limit should be eight if you want to display eight products if you want to display only four products you could set limit to four i'm setting limit to eight and columns will be four once you do this thing after that you can click on update and with this we have completed our home page now whenever we use elementor to create any page or any section we should always see how that section 
or how that page looks on a mobile phone okay so basically we have to make or convert this website or this page into a mobile friendly page into a mobile friendly page so let's see how we can do that so for that what you can do is you can click on this link or click on this logo at the bottom right corner responsive mode click on this and from here select the mobile portrait okay now as you can see some things are looking good but some things are just totally messed up like these sections okay especially this top banner section so let's fix this thing so first of all what i want to is i don't want this uh, this left sidebar this this thing in the mobile phone okay so i'll what i'll do is i'll click on edit container for this one go to advanced go to responsive and select this thing hide on mobile okay select this thing now this will be hidden now for this one click on this for the second option click on edit container go to advanced and you can see padding is fine but we don't want this margin left uh, 20 so i'll remove that thing margin left we don't want any margin at left now what we'll do is we'll remove this padding also in fact we want 80 pa padding uh, or just remove this this padding totally now from top we will add maybe 30 or 40 pixels bottom also you can add like 30 40 pixels padding and after that we can fix this thing so we'll select the first text we'll bring it in center in mobile i want everything in center for we'll bring the second text again center and we'll decrease the size of this text okay maybe something like this then we'll select the third text again we'll bring it in center and our button will also be in center okay now looking much better if you think this is distracting this image is distracting the text you can do one thing you can go to edit container and you can change the position to maybe center left or something like this if you think that that image was distracting or if you don't think that uh, that then you can leave it as it is center center now for this one what you can do is you can click on this edit container okay and for mobile phone first go to layout for mobile phone you can set like two columns like this okay so it will display two columns in each row and again what we'll do is to, we'll add some spacing at left and right so for that we'll add maybe 10 pixel spacing or maybe not here remove this gap uh, let it be zero go to advanced and from here we can add this thing so padding top and bottom is 30 which is good so i'll keep that thing top bottom 30 but left right also i'll add 10 pixels okay so top bottom 30 but left and right 10 pixels now i'll click on the first option or maybe i'll click on over here I'll select the second option and what i want to do is for mobile phone i want to increase the size of the image okay maybe to 30 percentage and i want to decrease the size of the content so that it uh, everything comes in one line so maybe 12 pixels so both heading and subheading will be 12 pixels or maybe subheading can be 10 pixels okay something like this now once you have this thing you can do one thing uh, you can right click on this image or maybe let's do one thing subheading is looking very small so maybe we can make it 12 this also but we can do one thing we can make em1 okay line height we can make it 1 or 1.2 like this and here we can add some spacing as well between this thing between the title and subtitle so maybe five six pixels uh, spacing and for second one maybe i'll increase the line height even more 1.4 or 1.5 maybe 1.4 is looking good okay title also again if you want you can increase the size of the title 13 14 again you can if you want you can do this thing but i think this is looking good so once you uh, select any one of these options you can just right click copy then right click paste style okay not paste but paste style now this is looking much better then these are looking best you don't have to do anything over here now for this section as well i want some spacing at left and right so what i'll do is i'll click on edit container padding top and bottom is 80 that is good so i'll keep that thing but left and right i want 10 pixels like this okay or maybe we can also do one thing bring these things in center as well title and subtitle and i'll decrease the size of this thing decrease the size of this subtitle maybe 13 pixels fine now right now it is displaying one product uh, in one uh, row later on in the video we'll display two columns or two products in one row for mobile phone because that looks much better 
so this is already looking good because we have imported it and once we have imported it it already looks good because it is automatically mobile friendly now for this also same thing click on edit section go to advanced top and bottom 80 fine but left and right 10 okay and everything in center same thing over here center and size will be 13 just like the top section now it is looking much much better on mobile phone so this is now mobile friendly maybe we can do one more thing we'll select this thing edit container uh, or maybe we'll select this now for this for for mobile phone you can bring this thing as well in center like this right so this this is looking now much better for mobile phone now click on update Similarly, go to tablet and you can design your website however you want it for tablet. So decrease the size of these and all. So for, for this one, for example, you can select this thing. Left and right now, we don't want this much. So we'll just keep it at 10 maybe. Okay. Then similarly for these uh, and also if you want, you can do one thing. Select this thing. Increase the size of the image. Okay. Instead of 20, uh, 15, make it 20 or even make it 25 if you want. Okay. Then after that, uh, you can also do one thing, click on edit container. Instead of 23, we can make it like a 27. Okay, not pixels, percentage, remember. Okay, 27 or maybe even 30 percentage because mobile phone, it will be different. Now for this one, you can select this text. You can decrease the size of this text. Okay, similarly, if you want to decrease the size of some other element, you can do that thing as well. So whatever looks good, you can just select this thing and we don't want this much padding from right. So we can fix this thing instead of uh, first, let me undo this thing. So top was 80, left 40, which is good. Top 80, left 40. But from right, instead of 250, let's add uh, 200. Okay, now this is looking better or maybe 220. All right. Okay, so whatever number you think is good, you can select this thing. Now right click, copy, right click, paste style, paste style, paste style. Okay, so this is how you can do it. For different sections, for different devices, now it will look much better. Okay, this is looking much better for mobile phone. Similarly for this as well, click on edit section. And just like we did with the mobile phone, first of all, let me add some padding from left and right. So I'll add again 10 pixels from left and right and you can decrease the sizes of this thing. You can also decrease the size, click on edit container. We don't want padding 10, uh, 30. We maybe for mobile phone, we just want uh, like uh, 15 or 20 pixels padding. Okay. Similarly, you can right click, copy, right click, paste, style, paste, style. Okay. So you can do it like this. Then after that, the uh, rest everything is fine. So you can make it mobile, tablet friendly. You can see how it looks on mobile phone tablet and desktop and once you're done with this you can click on update and finally with this we have completed our home page we have also made it mobile friendly now do one thing come back to your dashboard now it's time to create blog post let's see how we can create different blog posts like i have created over here in the demo website if i click on blog here you can see we have these blog posts so let's see how we can create a blog post like this for example let me just open this one now to create a new blog post, you first of all click on post from the left hand side, delete the hello world. This is a dummy blog post, delete it. Now to create a new blog post, click on add new post. Now this is the title of the blog post, five best summer dresses or whatever title you want. Now if you want to learn more about blogging, by the way, how to do blogging, how to create the perfect SEO friendly blog post, there is a dedicated video on that. You can watch that on my channel. If you go to my channel, you will search, the, uh, this is the video as you can see how to start uh, money making blogging 2024 or if you want, you can just go to YouTube and search for Nayar Sheikh blog and watch the latest tutorial. So this is the one how to start a free money making blog with chat GPT and WordPress 2024. So in that I have explained a lot about SEO and all those things. So make sure to watch that video if you want to learn more about blogging. In this, we'll just be creating a simple blog post. So I'll just copy paste the content over here just to show you how it works then at the right hand side you will click on post uh, give any category so maybe this is talking about fashion so i'll give it a new category of fashion add new category give it some tags these are different uh, than the you know those were earlier that was product tags this is uh, 
uh, block tag similarly earlier it was product categories this is uh, block categories these are two different things now for the featured image this image at the top is the featured image so you can set some image as your featured image maybe let me just set uh, let me just set this image as the featured image all right and after that click on publish and just like that you have created your blog post again i'm saying if you want to learn more in detail how to write a blog post perfect blog post make sure to watch this video all right now once you have the blog post now it's time to create different pages so click on pages first of all there are some draft pages let's publish them so refund and return policy you have to edit this page and you have to type in your own refund and return policy whatever it is how many days you will accept a refund and returns for what all payment options or what all refund policy return policy you have you can type in over here and remove these things this is not a sample page anymore make sure to make changes on this website once you make changes on the policy you can publish this page so now this is not a draft page this is a published page now again come back similarly do this thing with the privacy policy page edit this page and uh, then after that uh, again change if you think everything is fine you can leave it as it is or if you want you can change the privacy policy again according to your website and then publish it as well then again come back now let's create other pages so first of all click on add new page let's start with the blog page page wherein you can display all the blog posts in one place this blog archive page so for this i'll give it a title of blog and just publish it just title and publish it so this is going to be our blog page now come back to your dashboard now just like we did with the home page we have to set this page as our official blog page so to do this thing we'll again hover over settings and click on reading now on the post page select the blog page that you have just created and click on save changes again if you go back to pages you will see the blog page and besides this now it says post page then click on add new page again next page is your track order page okay so i'll type in track order then after that for the track order page you will have to click on this plus button and search for short code now select the short code and you have to paste in the short code for track order page so which you will get again in this page woocommerce short codes page if you go at the very top in fact uh, here it is order tracking form copy this short code and just paste it over here now this will be your order tracking page if you just publish it and if you open this in a new tab once the page is published if you open this in a new tab this as you can see is now your order tracking page again come back now let's create our contact page so i'll give it a title of contact and just publish it now till now we have seen few things we have seen how to uh, create a website first of all click on edit with elementor we have seen for the home page i have shown you how you can use basic elements to create all these things then after that i have also shown you how to use the pre-made uh, layouts okay blocks in this case now let's see how we can use pre-made pages the entire page so how you can do that so for that again you will click on this fourth icon this rocket icon and after that you can go to uh, pages under pages you can search for free first of all we want only free options now open any one of these layouts for example let's open the first layout if you get an image preview anything like this click on back to library you will get this thing now if you want to display for example the contact page here as you can see this is the contact page i'll click on this thing this is how it will look like maybe i like this thing so i'll select this click on import template and this will import the contact page template for me here as you can see at top you have uh, your map instead of this location if you want some other location you can click on this pencil icon at top left maybe instead of this uk location i'll type mumbai location and increase the zoom okay then after that change the phone number and all you can just do it like this change the phone number now the right hand side contact form not found click on that and delete this short code for this now go back to your dashboard you will see at the left hand side you will see contact option this one click on this then click on this edit form uh, contact form one edit this thing now whatever you see under this thing delete it everything now go back to that media folder and inside the media folder you will see this contact form file open this file this is how it will look like copy everything from this file come over here paste it over here click on save 
Once you have pasted in this thing, now you can copy this short code, this blue section short code and paste it over here. This will now be your contact form. Okay. Now click on update and just like this, you have created your contact page. Again, come back to your dashboard. Now, since we have all our pages, now we can also create our menu. We have not yet created our menu. So let's see how we can create a menu. To create a menu, you hover over appearance and click on menus. Now let's give it a name. So under menu name, I'll name it main menu. You can name it primary menu, whatever you want. Name is not important. Now what all pages you want. So under this, I want my home page, blog page, uh, shop page, track order page, wish list and all we don't need because as you can see, this is your wish list page, this heart icon. This is your my icon page, this icon, this is your cart page. So we don't want these pages. Uh, I want the contact page as well. Click on add to menu. Now I want my shop page over here, uh, track order after that. All right. Now under my shop page, I want some other links as well. So if you want this thing, you can display your WooCommerce categories. So right now this category, this is your regular category, block category, not your product category. So to display your product categories, you can click on screen options at top and select tick mark this thing product categories. And now you'll see product categories. Uh, I'll add this thing and bring it under shop. Now make sure to tick mark primary menu at bottom. Click on save menu. Now again, if you come back to this page and refresh it, you will see this menu over here. Okay. This is how it looks like. This is your menu. Again, come back. Now we have few more menus. If you see, these are also menus, shop page and support page. These both, these are menus. So what you can do is if you want to display these menus or create these menus, click on create a new menu. And for example, I'll type in support, click on create menu. And under this, I want uh, two, three pages like under support, you can have your contact page, refund policy, and uh, also your privacy policy pages. Okay. So this is your support menu. Don't need to tick mark anything at the bottom. Just click on save menu. Similarly, if you want to create a new menu, click on create menu or uh, and uh, I'll name it pages. Okay. And after that, I'll add my basic pages over here, like home blog and contact. Okay. Now again, click on save menu. And then after that, I'll create a new menu and I'll name it, uh, maybe customer. Click on create menu. And under this, I'll add some important pages for customer. For example, their my account page. Uh, track order page and their wish list page. Okay. Click on save menu. So this, uh, this is how you can create your footer menus. Now, if you see at the bottom right now, we don't see anything under footer. So first we have to enable footer and to do this thing, you have to click on this customize link at top. Okay. If you don't see this customize link for some reason, you can come to your dashboard and under appearance also, you will see this customize link. So you can click on that. Now, first of all, we will have to enable footer. We'll again come back to the customize link, uh, customize page very soon. For now, we just want to deal with the footer. So for that, click on layout, select footer. And under this, under footer column, select four columns. If you want four columns, obviously. So this will display four columns. Then at the bottom, we have the copyright text. If you want to dis uh, change anything under that till here, everything is fine. Copyright 2024 Flipkart or whatever your website name is. After that, it says powered by and all. So I'll remove this thing powered by thing. Here it is. As you can see this text powered by this. So I'll remove this much powered by theme author. And this is the privacy policy. Now it is looking or if you want to uh, add some more text like uh, made by an year shake, anything like that, you can do that thing as well. Okay. Now this is how it will look like. And before this thing, let me add this. Okay, this is how it will look like. Then click on publish. So this was your footer. Again, come back to the dashboard. Now we have created the footer, but if you can still see, it is still blank. We need to replace these things with real footer elements. So let's see how we can do that. So for that, again, first come back to your dashboard. Now under appearance, click on widgets. Let's start with the footer option. Now under the main footer option, first we have this thing. Okay. This is our uh, first thing. You can just copy this much first. This is simple heading. So if you want, you can do one thing, click on plus button, then uh, search for heading paste in the heading, which is this, then this is simple text. 
so you can click on plus button again paragraph or before that before that let's actually delete this thing because we want this in multiple columns we want this in four columns then what you can do is you can select this plus button and search for column okay select columns 100 percent now inside these columns you can add this thing so first heading okay not this one heading is wustifa whatever the name of your website is then simple text all right and then after that uh, let me delete this thing then after that click on this uh, uh, plus button again this plus button small one inside this thing and over here search for social icons okay you will see this social icons now what all icons you want wordpress icon then whenever icon you select you have to also enter the link okay so i'll just enter this website link over here similarly if you want click on plus button if you want to select the facebook icon select the facebook and after that click on that enter your facebook links similarly click on plus button twitter icon enter your twitter link and so on so this is your first option inside this column then after that next thing that we need is we need this uh, uh, first i'll give this title shop we need this navigation menu so if you search for navigation menu let's add the title shop and maybe i want to display or maybe let's add the title support and i'll select the support menu now once you click on outside you will see the menu similarly for the third one as well i'll search for navigation maybe this time i'll select customer navigation i'll display the customer menu and then for the third one also maybe i want to display navigation menu and this time maybe uh, i'll type in pages and select the pages menu now once you select this thing uh, once everything is displaying you can now click on update if you again come back to this page and refresh it let's see the changes let's try it again okay <laughs> we should have added this uh, under footer widget not under main sidebar let's see if i can copy this thing i don't think i can but let's see okay copy and uh, under footer widget let's see if i can paste i don't think i can do that okay so we'll have to do it again column then after that uh, just copy this much okay under this column and then after that plus button social icons same thing click on plus button add whatever link you want for different social media platforms plus button facebook plus button twitter or whatever x you want to add then navigation menu just like we did over here give some title and select that menu then again click on this plus button for navigation menu and after that uh, this is uh, maybe for customer so we'll add the customer we'll select the customer menu from here then after that uh, finally one more navigation menu and i'll give it a title of pages and select the pages menu that we have just created in the previous step once you see all these things click on update let's again come back refresh it and now as you can see this is how it will look like now this was the footer now i'll have to delete all these things so let me delete everything from here right fine now for the main uh, for the main option option and footer sidebar first under main sidebar main sidebar is basically your blog sidebar if you go to the blog page here you can see search, uh, recent comments, co categories, all these basic things. So if I search for this search element, this is the one. Okay. Then after that, uh, recent post, I can search for this one, recent post. So I'll select this latest post. Then after that, if you want to display recent comments, then you can display this latest comments. And similarly, you can display all these things. Okay. Then uh, what all we have recent comments categories if you want you can click on plus button search for categories and select this categories list okay now select the woocommerce sidebar and this is your shop page sidebar if you open the shop page you can see at the left hand side we have product search filter by price and all these things so first click on plus button and search for product search which is this 
then we have uh, categories or for, then we have filter by price so if you search for price you will see filter by price or maybe let's see search for filter i think we have to use this one filter by attribute uh, price let's okay not this one actually okay now let's search for filter by price this is the one filter product by price all right then after that uh, we need categories these are product categories so you have to search for product categories this is the one or uh, not this one again not this one product not product by category product categories let me scroll down this one product categories list then after that we have a uh, top rated products all right so products by rating if you search for rating scroll down products by rating list this is the one all right and finally a uh, product by attribute which is color now if i search for attribute this is the one filter by attribute select this one or maybe product by attribute select this product by attribute and you can select what all attributes you want to give so first let me just add this thing let let's first see how it looks and after that uh, we'll try again refresh this page or save this page come back over here go to your shop page okay right now this is how it is looking uh this is all messed up so what you can do is sometimes it happens so to fix this thing you can do one thing you can just go to plugins and install a new plugin click on add new plugin sometimes it happens and uh, select this plugin first let it uh, this one classic widgets okay you'll see right on this page classic widgets if you don't see this thing you can search for this plugin classic widgets by wordpress contributors now click on activate now once you do this thing uh, everything should work fine let's try it again refresh this page okay i'll have to do it again under appearance click on widgets and uh, under woocommerce sidebar first i'll have to delete everything now all right now i'll have to do it again now at the left hand side uh, we'll have to first search for product uh, search here it is select product search select woocommerce sidebar click on add widget okay if you want to give any title we have not given any title then we have filter by price then if you search uh, filter product by price select this one okay then we have uh, categories product categories so if you go down you should see product categories which is this all right then we have a top rated products uh, filter product by rating this is the one this is much easier and it will look much better then uh, product by uh, attribute this is the one filter product by attribute and you have to select which attribute so first i'm selecting color then i'll use the same option and uh, not this one then i'll select the same option and for the second one i'll select filter by size i'll give it a title of filter by size save and for the top one filter by color all right then uh, we have product tags so if you scroll down you should see product tag cloud now let's try again come over here refresh it now as you can see this is fixed looking much better now we have we have to just make it bring this thing side or bring this sidebar at the left hand side which is pretty easy we can do that thing later on but for now you can see everything is working absolutely fine in fact let's do the final customization so you can click on this customize link at top now let's start from top let's start from header so first we need to get our logo so for that click on site identity under logo you can upload your logo whatever logo you want you can upload that logo i've given you some images i want to use this one as my logo so i'll upload this image click on select crop this much click on crop image and after that logo width i want 125 pixels not big just 125 pixels all right now click on publish you can also upload a site icon and let me explain you what a site icon is for example if i want this as my site icon click on select click on crop image here as you can see this is what a site icon is okay uh, you can see this this thing uh, when you open the tab let me show you this thing if i bring it over here as you can see here this icon is displayed okay this is what your site icon is so we have set this as our site icon click on publish 
come back let's see mobile logo if you want different logo for mobile you can set that thing as well let me click on mobile okay this is how it will look like so under mobile also make sure to type in 125 click on mobile icon first this one then type in 125 for mobile as well okay let me again come back to desktop then after that uh, let's see this header because we have changed the color of the header in the demo website so i'll go to layout i'll select normal header go to design and over here I'll, i want to change the color instead of this i want this blue color or whatever color you want you can select the color code I'll paste in the color over here. Okay. Now, because we have made it blue, rest everything, the text and everything should be white. So icon color, I'll select uh, white color. Okay. This is the color code FFF. Okay. And similarly, now as you can see, icon color is changed. Okay. Similarly for count color, count color is this blue color. So again, I'll get the uh, blue color or if you want orange color for count, I'll, you can do that thing as well. Let me show you this thing. Now, as you can see, the count is orange. So you can have that thing as well. Count background color. I want white color. So FFF, that will be the background color. Now click on publish. Now menu color also we want white, but for that, you'll have to go to uh, this option. You'll have to go to typography, come back, typography, primary menu and uh, pan menu color. Change this thing to white color. Let's refresh. Here, as you can see, this is how it will look like. Publish it. Then uh, let's come back. Let's see what we have next. Footer we have already seen, so no need to see this thing. Then uh, let's let's change the layout of this thing. So WooCommerce things. So I'll click on WooCommerce. First product images, I this is a square image. I want this kind of vertical image. This looks much better for my kind of products. If you for your product, this looks good, then you can leave it as it is. Now for that, click on product images and select custom. Okay. By default, it is four by three. Change this thing to three by four. Okay. Under custom, make it three by four. Now, as you can see, this is how it will look like. You can publish it again. Come back now. Select shop archive. Okay, this is the shop archive page. I want this thing at the left hand side sidebar. So under general, let's see where we have this option. Uh, I think we'll have this option under layout. Click on layout. Click on uh, here it is sidebar. Click on sidebar and for shop select left sidebar shop product archive select left sidebar. And now as you can see, this is how it will look like uh, publish it. Then come back now for the default color. First again, let me go to typography for the default color for body. As you can see, this is light color. I don't want this thing. Uh, I want to make it darker. So I think we'll have that under color. Click on color. And this is the one text color. I want black color. Okay, text color. And uh, theme color. You, If you want to change the theme color instead of this blue color, if you want some other color, you can change that thing as well. Now for button, if you open anything, button looks a little bit different. I'll give you a CSS code. You can paste in that code and things will look much better for you. And also we want trust badge over here. If you open a single product, you get the trust badge at the bottom. If you want this trust badge, you can come back, go to WooCommerce, single product, product single, general and trust badge image. You can upload that image, which I have given you. So let me search for that. Here it is safe checkout. This is the trust badge. Select this, click on choose image. It will now display on your single product page like this. You can also go to the media folder and now open the CSS file, copy everything, come back. Now, after you paste in the CSS file, it will do some changes like it will change the layout of these buttons and so on. If I come back again, click on additional CSS and paste in this thing. Now, as you can see, button layout instead of that circular, now it is this thing. This add to wish list color is also changed and the icon for this heart icon is also increased. If I, if I again delete it, you can see earlier it was looking like this. Now, when I paste in this thing, also the title size increases a little bit. Now publish it. We need to do a few more things. If I go back to the shop page right now, this is how the uh, add to wishlist page lo thing looks like. When you hover over this thing, you get this icon. But in my demo website, if I come back here, it is already displaying and it is displaying at the bottom left with this white color thing. So to fix this thing, you can go to WooCommerce, select a uh, wishlist. Let's see. Uh, first select uh, this one shop archive and then select wishlist button. 
and select the third option. Now that is how it will look like. As you can see, click on publish again and rest everything I think looks good. Let me see. Yeah, rest everything looks good. So you can cut this thing. Now only two things are left. I want to show you a demo order, how an order will be placed on your website, then how a customer will make the payment and all on after that, how you can process that order. That is one thing. Another thing that I want to show you is uh, how you can convert this website into an app. So first let me place in a uh, demo order. So if I come to this website, for example, if a customer has come to your website, if they want to purchase this product or any other product, maybe let's select this variable product. If a customer wants to purchase this variable product, this customer maybe wants to purchase the medium size green color. So they will select this thing $42. Click on add to cart. Now the customer will click on view cart. They can see all the details will be updated over here based on the shipping address as you can see because my location is in Maharashtra 50 cents GST also applied 5% so everything is working properly now I'll click on proceed to check out and this customer will now uh, fill in this form let me do it very quickly so here as you can see I am filling in all this form I am entering my details my mobile number you can make the mobile number compulsory by default it is optional uh, actually let's do that uh, we want mobile number to be compulsory so click on customize it is optional, but it will become compulsory. Click on WooCommerce, click on uh, checkout. And here, as you can see, company name, phone number, make it required. Okay. Phone should be required. So select this thing. Phone should be required. And after that, uh, uh, address line to it. These are, these are all fine. Just make sure phone is required. Then after that, you can see flat rate. Everything is uh, based on your location. Shipping and everything is calculated. GST is calculated. Now you can select cash on delivery, you can make payment through card, you can make payment through PayPal, whatever option you want, you can select that and you click on place order. Once you place an order, once the customer places an order, they will get this order detail, they get the order number, date, payment method and so on. They can see these things later on as well. If a customer comes, they go, they click on the dashboard page, go to orders, they can see this thing over here as well. The current status of the order is processing. Now let me show you your end. Our customer has placed the order, how you will process the order. So you will, whenever there is a new order on your website, you'll always get an email notification about that. After that, you can come back to your dashboard. You can see uh, under WooCommerce, under orders, it says one, which means that you have one order. If you open this thing, two minutes ago processing, if you open this thing, name of the customer is Nayer Sheikh. You can see the billing, shipping address, phone number of the customer and so on, which product this person has ordered medium green this thing okay gst everything is applied now if this payment was made through card you would have seen that thing under order note over here that this payment was successful and you would have got the transaction id and you could have checked your uh, payment gateway and you would have received the thing so you would know that this order is i have received the order but this is cash on delivery so even that is written over here payment to be made upon delivery so this is cash on delivery now you'll get these order details and you will process the order, you will package the order and after that you will send this order to some courier facility, they will you know, send this order to the customer. Once it is sent to the customer, first of all, when once you hand over the package, product package to the courier facility, you will do one thing, you will go to order notes and you will add a note. You can now add a note like a product dispatched and you can give them the tracking details, order, order tracking number for example if you send it through dhl or any other or you know logistics operation they will always give you order tracking number so your customer can live order track their number so you can give them this thing and after that instead of private note select note to customer now a customer will get an email with this order tracking number they can uh, go ahead and track their order and you can also give the tracking link dhl or whatever option you're using you can give that link now once the order is received, once you have received the payment and once uh, the customer has received the order or the product, you can change the status of this thing to completed and click on update. And with this, your transaction is now 100% settled. This order is now completed. Okay, so this part is done. In fact, everything related to website is now 100% completed. Only the app thing is left. How you can create or convert this website into an app. Let's very quickly see that thing as well. So again, come back to your dashboard. To convert this website into an app, you will uh, see this thing at the left hand side, add a new plugin. 
and under plugin name search for WAP press W A P P P R E S S. Okay, so it, it has three P's in between. Okay, this is the one WAP press. Install this one WAP press create mobile app for any website by WAP press team. This is the one that we need. Once it is installed, once you have installed this plugin, first let it install. All right, so once it is installed, just click on activate. And once it is activated, uh, let it first get activated. Once it is activated, you will see at the left hand side we have WAPPRESS BASIC at the very bottom left. Under that, click on settings. Now enter your name, click on enter name. You can name, uh, you can also see a preview of the app at the right hand side. This is how your app will look like, okay? At the, uh, at the left hand side, under your, enter your app name. You can type in your app name. So what I'll do is I'll select this thing. I'll name it Flipkart, C-A-R-T. Okay. Under theme, make sure you have Woostify. If you have multiple themes installed, make sure you in uninstall all the other themes. Make sure you have only Woostify theme installed. Okay. Now click on save changes. Once you click on save changes, now before you proceed further, I just notice that the this icon color is not uh, this is not white color i want this white color for hamburger icon for menu it is not easily visible so let me fix that thing before you proceed further so again go to customize because it will be very difficult for your customers to see this thing if the background color is darker this color should be lighter so first let me see the mobile now here as you can see this is the menu thing but we cannot see it because the color is different so to fix this thing we'll click on uh, layout i think mobile header or maybe uh, yeah mobile menu design hamburger icon change this thing to white color fff and uh, now as you can see it is easily seeable now you can easily see this thing click on publish all right so now you can scroll down once you click on save changes uh, scroll down now there are two things that you need app launcher icon and uh, app launcher icon is the icon for the app for google for flipkart we have different icons so you can upload some icon from here maybe let me upload uh, this icon fashion open so this is your uh, app launcher icon and app splash screen first time you see a screen so it could be some image like this let me upload a simple image we all go to products let me upload this image for example click on open and select apk for Android app, okay, Google app, Android app, and click on build slash generate app. All right, so it is taking a lot of time. So what I'll do is I'll try again. I'll keep it loading. I'll keep this thing loading in this tab. In another tab, I'll try it again. So same thing, settings. Enter. These things will automatically be added. Uh, okay, you can also add the app launcher icon and all. Click on build generate app. Let's try again in another tab. I have not uploaded the app launcher icon and splash screen icon just to save some time. Okay, so once it is completed, you will get, let's see that page. Okay, this one is also completed. So whatever uh, you want, you can, once it is completed, you will get this button, download app, click on this button. A new file will be downloaded for you, APK file. Here as you can see, new file is downloaded with your website name, shop24, blog dude or whatever your website name is. Now you cannot just upload this file on your media folder. So how to upload this file or where to upload this file? For that, you'll have to again go back to your Hostinger Edge panel. So go to edgepanel.hostinger.com or hostinger.com. Go to websites. Open your website. In this case, it is blog dude. Click on manage. After you click on manage, you'll see the media file manager. If you don't see file manager over here, you can search for this at the left hand side. You'll get the file manager. Once you open the file manager, you will see public HTML first, let it load public HTML. And under that, you will get this file under that. You will see uh, these kind of files, but because I'm using a subdomain, I'll also have to click on this subdomain, which is shop 24. This is the one, but once you click on public HTML, this is what you should see. And here we have to create a new folder, not necessary, but it is better to create a new folder. So I'll click on new folder at the left hand side. I'll name it app, everything, small letters, lowercase, click on create. And over here, I'll upload that file. So this is the file that we just downloaded. I'll drag and drop it over here just like this. And here, as you can see, uploaded. Once you have uploaded the file, uh, what you can do is you can go back to your website. You can add this link somewhere. For example, you can add this link in the mobile menu, in your menu. 
so I can do one thing I'll go to appearance menus primary menu or wherever you want if you want to add this link in the footer you can add the link in the footer as well now under custom links this time I'll select custom links under link text I'll type in download app now under link URL first enter your website URL only till here okay let me open this thing first in a new tab only this much your website link your complete website link oh, first add this thing then after that come back over here right click click on app info not app info okay no worries you can do one thing uh, just remember that after that thing we had created a folder called app so what you have to do is after your website name type in app name of the folder then give a forward slash and after that name of this file so i'll click on info copy the name of the file this is the one click on copy and paste it over here this is the link that we need first copy this link if i just paste in this link as you can see this file has getting uh, started downloading so i want this link pasted over here under url okay this link now click on add to menu click on save menu if i again come back over here refresh it now as you can see if i click on this thing as you can see app started downloading i'll cancel this thing now let me show this thing in mobile phone how your customers can download this thing in their mobile phones and how you can use how they can use this app all right so here as you can see this is the mobile app already it looks amazing okay one more thing i just noticed in mobile phone you want to display two images uh, two products in one line here it is only displaying one so let me first again come back over here click on customize first let me fix this thing now under customize i'll click on woocommerce now under woocommerce click on product catalog and over here you have to select this option mobile icon select mobile icon and increase the number to two now you can see it will display two images or uh, two products in one place in mobile now click on publish now let me again go back to that app in my mobile phone refresh this website now if i scroll down you can see it is now displaying two products in one line so this is what i wanted now here first of all we want to download the app so i'll click over here download app now here as you can see if you see the notification downloading app once it is downloaded i'll click on open click on install now it is getting installed i'll click on scan app if it will ask you to scan the app all right so once it is installed or once it is scanned you will get this install button click on that now open this thing or let me show you this thing over here if you see okay now this is how it will display so i'll open this app and here as you can see your mobile app okay this is now your mobile app everything is working if you open a single product for example you can open a single product customers can see all these things they can order any product click on add to cart so everything will be working click on checkout and once you click on checkout you can make the payment cash delivery whatever option so this is your mobile app this is how it will work let me again show you this is your mobile app so this is how you can convert this website into an app as well all right guys so finally with this we have completed this tutorial i hope you guys find this tutorial helpful using only free resources you have done so much created a professional e-commerce website converted into an app placed an order payment gateways everything is what was done using only free resources so i hope you guys find this tutorial helpful if you find this tutorial helpful if you want to watch more useful videos like this one make sure to use subscribe and click on the bell icon now if you like this video give a thumbs up to this video share it with your friends on facebook twitter whatsapp whatever social media platform you use and throughout the video if you have any doubts any comments any suggestions for me you can always leave them in the comments section below and finally thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next one